The studio doors are locked. This is a closed set. Will Murray. There in the freezing cold 30 degree house, I I, I took care of business. Jason Kaplan. My yeah. masturbatory habits have stayed a steady, even yeah, uh, flow. It, it, Their world. The relationship has deteriorated. No, no, no. no, no, no. Their life. What is going on around here? And the Howard Stern back office. You were screaming and fighting and being drunk. No, 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 no. This is Back Office Radio with Will and Jason. Call 888 Stern 101. It's just that uh, Jason and Will spewing some bullshit. It just sounds like there's a lot of uh, nonsense going on with that thing. Like, those guys just say shit, and then, you know, everybody gets all irritated. Everybody gets their feelings yeah. hurt. Welcome to Back Office Radio. I'm Jason Kaplan here with Will Murray and Petty Knitter, where we are going to spew shit and hurt people's feelings for the next two hours here on Howard 101. What's That's up, what Will? we do, brother. That's all we do. Now, Petty, I don't know if enough people know you. Scott uh, Pace said that you're kind of. You yeah, know. it's okay. It's <laughs> maybe, all right. Maybe Thanks, should, Scott. Maybe we should talk to Al more. Who yeah. are you? <laughs> Thanks. I'm Scott. <laughs> Petty, keep your comments to yourself. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Again, welcome to Back Office Radio, only on Howard 101. If you'd like to give us a call, it's 888-STERN-101. That's 888-783-7610. And there was a lot of Back Office Radio talk on the Stern Show this week, whether or not people care about the show, whether Howard cares about the show, whether people know who Robin is or care about anybody other than Howard. And uh, we'll get into that in a little bit. But uh, we just got back from the Thanksgiving break. How you doing? I'm okay. You look uh, fit and trim. Thank you. Not That's really. like the nicest thing you've oh, ever wait, Not at all. <laughs> I, uh, I, I'm in trouble, Will. I am in, I can't, uh, I don't, I don't know if you've noticed, uh, today, but I, I, I'm having a hard time concentrating. I'm a little spacey and I, I had, a, I had to meditate before the show today and, and I fucked up. I, um, I, I use Lexapro with the, uh, an antidepressant. And no, I, you do. I do. I don't know. If you, <laughs> listen, no, clearly nobody knows anything about me. So let me, uh, let me just like, inform the audience. I, I'm on Lexapro. I take an antidepressant and my prescri- I went, I went to call on my prescription the other day and it had just expired. Like I called on like the 18th and it had expired on the 17th or something and they can't get it. They said they were going to call my doctor and they didn't call the doctor and, and we're leaving this weekend. So basically I'm going on like a, I'm going to, by, by Sunday, I'm going to have been off Lexapro for a week. And today I, I'm feeling the effects. Like you do, I, yeah. I'm feeling like, like, like I'm getting shooting things in my in my brain, and 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 I, my tip of my tongue feels numb, and and I have a headache, and the meditation definitely helped with it. But I, I'm like, I have to call the doctor as soon as the show is over. Wow. I, need, I need my Lexapro. You're running on no Lexapro this week. Uh oh, I know. Oh no, God. this is dangerous. And and even like last night, I got home. I worked a very long day yesterday. I work hard. Uh, <laughs> I was here from five thirty in the morning to eight thirty p.m. I went home. I watched a little Sons of Anarchy, which I've been doing. Hour and a half episodes, which is awesome if you're a fan of Sons of Anarchy. And, um, I started to get really depressed. Like I'm sitting there smoking and, uh, <laughs> I'm sure that helps. And all of a sudden I started to get really sad and like really like almost like I wanted to cry. And I'm like, Oh no, it's happening again. Like how fast do you think all that stuff wears off and all the bad stuff comes back? Apparently five days. <laughs> so, uh, so if I'm off with the show today, I apologize. You look you... a little freaked out. It's kind of weird, right? Well, it's like can... the first time we did the show almost. <laughs> yeah. I, I know. I'm a little, I, you said. I, before the show, I told Jim, like, I have to meditate before Jim McClure, the producer of, uh, extraordinaire of Howard 101. I told him that I had to, uh, med, I had to meditate before the show. Is it helping? The meditation definitely helped because, because I, I really, I could, I couldn't look people in the eye earlier today. Like, that's how, that's how spacey my brain is. Like, I'm all over the place. Was it a good meditation? Okay. Yeah. Decent. Yeah, right. Is your, like, mantra food related? I wish. <laughs> you know, the mantra doesn't make sense. I, I won't say what my mantra is, but it's... Cheeseburger. Is yeah. Mayonnaise. Mayonnaise. No, it just makes me hungry. <laughs> well, there is. There's already. my stomach. So, yeah, I don't know, but I had a good Thanksgiving. I ate great. My, my brother uh, and, and his wife, shows too. Michael Kaplan and Heather Kaplan, A plus job. There was no sweet potatoes with, uh, with marshmallows. marshmallows. Marshmallow. But I did get the lobster macaroni and cheese, which was uh, a very nice substitute. Good. How was your Thanksgiving? It was kind of low key, whatever. I mean, it's so funny now that I have a kid, you don't really look forward to holidays the way you used to because it just means I'm going to be doing a lot of work <laughs> at home as opposed to doing a lot of work in the office. Did you do it at your house or did you go somewhere? No, we were at our house. We were locked down in the house. My is, parents came up. And, is that because you don't like to travel with the kid? No, it's because we had no better options. No. <laughs> God, I took a train ride out to Boston and some asshole had their kid on there and they were crying and I just... Like, yeah. why? Like, fuck off, dude. Just fuck off. Like, don't... Go, who needs to go? So if I had a kid, I don't think I'd go anywhere for like three years. Nah, they, you know, I mean, yes, you're right, actually. Teddy, how was your Thanksgiving? Delicious. What'd you eat? 
Turkey. Or, where'd you go? You go. Home? My parents. They they do the whole deal. Yeah. Well, it sucks because I have older siblings on, who live on the West Coast, right. so they go to Hawaii. And, and when you say older siblings, you mean like 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 ten, twelve years older. Yeah. Than yeah. You have an interesting family. And then, then and then and then there's Teddy me. was the mistake. He was yeah. the anniversary present. <laughs> uh, my mother says she wanted someone to believe in Santa Claus again. Okay. Right. And so. and she got stuck with you. you? Yeah. Yeah, she, she got, got me. Sick, she got stuck with a bitter, cynical <laughs> asshole. <laughs> it was delicious, but we were home back in the city like 7.30 at night on Thanksgiving. <laughs> we were in and out. Now, your wife is British. Is she, is she like bitter about Thanksgiving, you know, because it's all about the pilgrims and how they uh, no. survived no, the She didn't world. know any of them. So She didn't know any of them. <laughs> Uh, and also, Thank you, Teddy. Show note, we are broadcasting today from the Catholic Channel studio. Our good friend, Lino, actually, not that good of a friend, I don't know his last name, Jim. Uh, what's Lino's last Ruley. name? Lino Ruli. Lino Ruli. The Catholic guy. He's the Catholic guy. We are in his studio. You can tell it's his studio. I think he has farts with a very distinct smell. There's, uh, there was definitely like oh. a smell when I walked in here today. No, nah, just kidding. But I have to say, I want to take credit. I feel I have converted Lino. Well, Lino's a Catholic, and I have converted him. We've had several lunches. And I haven't converted him to Judaism or, or, or agnostic. But what I have converted him into is a real meat eater. When we first went out to eat, he we, he got a steak. He ordered it well done. Well done. That's well, ridiculous. That's disgusting. And uh, all the times we've eaten since then, he's got. I, I, I gave him tons of shit for it, and he's been getting a little bit more undercooked, a little bit more uncooked. And then I, I think he's at medium rare to rare. So, Lino. Fascinating. Lino. <laughs> Lino, somebody that trusts me. Nobody at Sirius knows, let alone outside the Sirius audience. Uh, no, he's got a book out. Lino's book. You can read it. It's uh, I am Lino Ruli. I, I don't it's know. It's like something like that. Sinner. Lino. Look it up on Amazon.com. He's a published author. This it's just guy. funny. We were in we're in the Catholic studio right yeah, now. There's Jesus on the cross right there. And we're like connected to another studio here. And earlier, Teddy was watching Brazzers.com, which is a porn site <laughs> for all you people that don't know out there. And the people were looking in like just shocked. The forgot on their about faces. the communal windows that yes, kind of separate. There's like here. a big cross in the window. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Everything's wrong about it. What is that cake? Is that like a what? Is that like the communal cookies or whatever you eat? Uh, what do you, what do they call it when you get the uh, Eucharist or whatever? Wafers. Wafers. Is that a wafer up there? Yeah. Can we can see we? Jesus on the cross, Jason? Yeah, That's what your people Jesus. did. <laughs> <laughs> that's my people up there jesus is jew he was a jew thank yeah, you yeah and like every jew we've been persecuted and hunted and uh and uh, nailed to a cross by the way bill hicks had a great joke about well is this really what jesus wants to see the second he comes back like like say he came back today does he really want to see pictures of himself nailed to a fucking cross <laughs> okay it's like your are it's a bill hicks joke that's not a jason Kaplan joke and uh last but not least i just want to give a quick update on the jd and jason truth uh, because there's a lot of conflict in the Middle East, and I compare JD and me to the Middle East. I think we have a truce. It's not a friendship. I think it's a truce, a ceasefire, if you will. Okay. And uh, I think it's going well, but I also think it's shaky and could break apart at any minute. What do you think? You you see us in the office? No, no, I agree completely. I think I genuinely believe that JD apologized to you because he just wanted this whole thing to go away, <laughs> not because he you know discovered that he loves you again. But I will say JD, and you brought up the point that uh, last time we did the show that once JD got all of that off of his chest, he might feel more relaxed. That you went through something similar with me, and once you kind of got it all off your chest, right. you were able to relax, like a cathartic experience. And I feel JD and I have gotten along better in the office this week. Like I've made some you know jokes, like some busting balls friend jokes, and yeah. he laughed and went along with it, and it wasn't like you know he stormed out of the so uh, i think the office is getting along better than ever but what do i know i mean i'm sure we're going to get into that a little bit further but i think the office is getting along better than ever and i don't know if it's because people are just too afraid to talk or they're just uh, everyone we're just putting all the truth out there and either way i really yeah. don't give a shit <laughs> uh, but brady in new jersey does brady will start off the show with a negative call welcome to back office radio all right guys how you doing what's up man well, I'm calling to continue on the conversation the other day you guys had on this uh, regular show and to say that your show should be canceled. Oh. Oh, okay. Now, why is that, Brady? Well, yeah. What would you listen to? Uh, right I've been listening now for the past five minutes on hold, and I'm <laughs> kind of ready to turn you guys off. Is that it? Here. Have I, you heard the show before? I heard it a couple times before, yes, and uh, e too much gossipy, man. I, All right, I Brady. Well, then this is a goodbye well, forever. So well, thank you, Well, you know, Brady. when uh, when someone like Cowards can't get through 15 minutes, I don't know how many people can get through it as well. You know Brady? what I'm saying? Brady, we'll see you on the other shows, buddy. <laughs> Thank you for that. Do you feel Ouch. like any added pressure today? Like, you know, there was a lot of talk about back office radio on yeah. Howard's show this week. I'm, I wonder if we have new listeners. No, I feel less pressure. I'm, oh, good. Clearly, nobody cares. Uh, <laughs> Mike in Detroit, welcome to back office radio. Let's go to a positive call. Hey, uh, praise be to Jesus for back office radio. Hell yeah. That last, that last douchebag doesn't know what he's talking about. You guys are the best show on the air. 
I, I didn't. I couldn't understand whether Howard and Robin were fucking with you guys during the week or not because, I mean, you guys are the best part of the Stern show. All the bullshit about what's going on with all the characters uh, in that fucking back office. Keep up the good work, brothers. Thank you, Mike in Detroit. You're way better than that last call. That last call was a piece of shit, but this call it was a good call. I appreciate it. All right, Al, let's start off the show as we start off back office radio every week. Will and I give our state of the office address. Al, hit it. State of the office. Back office radio nearly came to an abrupt end this week when Howard learned the show was causing problems among the staff. Howard questioned whether his listeners even care about the back office. But maybe nobody cares. Like some of those people in the back office. I mean, who even knows who they are? Like I barely know them. Well, fans do. If you do a show about David Height, it's so inside that there, like, there are ten people here who can't recognize. Two, two things. Height. Is the show yeah. ruining friendships? Do people really give a shit about the staffers like Teddy Microphone? <laughs> and seriously, what the hell is going on with David Height's hair? <laughs> And hey, by the way, if you don't know who David Height is, I put up a new feature on HowardStern.com called Meet David Height, and you can go right on now to HowardStern.com and see what David looks like in all his douchiness. Uh, and uh, he sent me that picture, by the way, and he, you know, he knows what he looks Did like. Did you see the picture on HowardStern.com? No, everyone I'm go right now. He's wearing, you know how, like when you get your ta- your arm all tattooed up, they call it sleeves. Yeah, right? he's literally wearing a sleeve of tattoos, like fake sleeves, like fake sleeves. And I go, Jason, wow, you really put up a douchey picture of uh, David Height. I mean, that's not probably what he wants up there, and he goes. No, David sent me that picture. That's the one he wanted. I said, use this. Yeah. (laughs) Well, sorry, David. We tried. We want to defend you. It turns out Steve Brandano was wrong. David Height loves when we talk about him on Back Office Radio. It was so funny. I I showed the picture to Steve this morning. I I put my computer to him. I go, Steve, really? This is the guy you want to defend? (laughs) So the question is, I love you, David. I love David. The larger question is, though, do fans care? Fans of the Howard Stern Show, not fans like walking down the street that don't know the show at all, but fans of the Howard Stern Show, of the Howard 100 and Howard 101, do they care about people that are outside of the studio? And also, to what degree do they care? Like Scott DePace was kind of saying on the wrap-up show this week that there's a, a line of demarcation, a, a, a Mendoza line, if you will, or as Scott wanted to call it, a, a Teddy Microphone line. Just real quick, because that's an important point. We're talking about... People that listen to the show, whether they care about Jason or Teddy or myself, I saw this in the back office. It was a piece of paper lying around, and I guess there was some study that they had done. I think this was Richard and Sal. Oh, so very scientific study. Exactly. They went out on the street, and they asked people, like, do they know any of these staffers? You know, Ronnie the limo driver, Scott Salem, John Hine. Of course, people on the street aren't going to know who any of those people are. That's right. not the point we were trying to make. Right, right. It's like it's like if you went to somebody who had never seen an episode of The Simpsons and then going outside of Homer, who's your favorite character? Yeah. Homer and Bart, who's your favorite character? You wouldn't know. But if you watch The Simpsons, you could name 5,000 people on the show that you love. Exactly I agree. Right. We, again, this show wouldn't exist anywhere but on Howard 101, and Will and I are completely well aware of that. I, I think, as a longtime fan of the show, before I started working here, this is the stuff I loved. I loved hearing the behind. I loved hearing who was in charge of this and that. And and, and and Grillo and Ganji were names that were very prominent in my life growing up. And Robin Radzinski and Scott Einzinger and all these behind the scenes. Andy Bloom, I was so excited when you were with Andy Bloom a couple weeks ago. When that it- guy called in and he goes, oh, there's too much back office gossip. That makes me <laughs> proud on some point yeah. on level. I'm like, that's what we're going for. I mean, we could give you more, just more gossip about my personal life if that's really what you're looking for. But I don't, I'm not 100% sure. That what do you that think, is. Teddy? More Jason gossip? Uh, no, I, More stories can't, about his dog. I can't get over this sleeve picture of David Hyde. I'm sorry, I'm just staring at it right so, now. So, Will, I put together, and I'm going to go uh, find it right now. Hold on a second. I put together kind of a Mendoza line. I want to figure out, for us, where do we stop caring? I'm going to throw out some names. These are, I want to say low level, just not high profile on air name. Okay. Okay. And you tell me where the audience stops caring. Okay, I'm going to start with somebody, uh, I'm going to start with people who actually get some airtime. Doug Goodstein. Oh, do people care about Doug Goodstein? I think they love to hear people rip on Doug Goodstein. Um, yeah, if he has interesting stories, a lot of these people that you're going to name, if they have a few funny stories, the fact that Doug went down and stole a camera out of a deli <laughs> on 9-11, 9/11 yeah. that's an interesting story. But the, I guess the question is, is I guess the Mendoza line has set the thing is, even if we have an interesting story on somebody, at what point? Do we not care? Because, so Doug is above the Mendoza line. He's above the Mendoza line. Matt in Massachusetts, welcome to Back Office Radio. What do you think? Yeah. Hey now. Hey now. Uh, I got barking, I got barking dogs here. Um, <laughs> I've been a long time fan. Um, I was on the show in a trivia contest a couple of years ago and, uh, just coming up there and like meeting everybody like Angie and Jason and Will 
it was like you guys are all celebrities to me. So this show is the best show on the channels, I think, after Howard. Thank, and what do you th and thank you, sir. And what do you think about uh, the Goodstein? Is he, is he worthy to talk about? Oh, absolutely. Like, I, I got, I don't know, you probably remember who I am. I was in the trivia contest. I got pictures with every one of you guys. I got are you Matt from, are you Matt from Boston? Yeah, are, from Haverhill. Yeah, I remember you. We went drinking afterwards. You're a nut. <laughs> hey. No, no, in a good way, in a good way, in a good way. Ross, uh, you know what? I quit drinking good. and everything. Good. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> good. I when my wife was pregnant. Yes. And, uh, Unfortunately, Matt is below the Mendoza line, yeah, Matt, so I don't know if we can keep going with this. <laughs> Think, all right, I'm just going to keep throwing out some more names. Mike Ganji, I guess, would be in that Goodstein category then? Yeah, of course people care about Ganji. Uh, Wolfie? Well, I mean, anybody that has their own jingle, you have to care about, right? <laughs> like, can we just stop and take a moment? He you tried to play that off so bad on the wrap-up show you know yesterday, I, might, too. I forgot about that. I might have to change my Douche of the Week nominee. You know what? That. That's a good point. <laughs> Wolfie, for anyone who missed it uh, on the show this week, uh, he has requested that we write a jingle for him in the way that John Hine has a jingle or Lieberman has a jingle. Was it a verbal request or an email? Do we have paper from, trails of this? From what I understand from the guys in the back office, that the, he, the phone calls and emails have been sent. There was not only a request, there was a follow-up to the request because on the to find out show, where he, said, he was with his He jingle. said it was suggested. Well, yeah. suggested. No, no, I think somebody said demanded. He was like, it wasn't demanded. It wasn't. <laughs> right, like you said. He want, it's like, it, it, I mean, the only thing douchier than that is like asking for your own nickname. You know, I mean, that's like what it's like. like hey, guys, I want a nickname. It's like, well, that's not how it works, dude. Your nickname is asshole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> call, me, call me Sting. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we we talked about David Hype, but what about Ben Barto? Now he's on Geek now, Card. He's on air a little bit. Ben Barto, I think we want to bring here in here for an office spotlight Absolutely. at some point, and we're not going to get into anything without his permission. But let me tell you, if we get into some of the Ben Bardo stories, you would care about Ben Bardo. Absolutely, absolutely. And it's funny, you know, Scott the Pace said that nobody cares about Teddy. I have forgotten during the wrap up show, but later I was like, Howard played all those clips on the air. I mean, he doesn't play a lot of back office clips, but he played the Teddy clips. Yeah, and and don't forget, I mean, I used to get the shit kicked out of me all the time with when Artie was here. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, right. All right, I'm going to throw another name out. You ready? John Hunterlock. Now, let, before you answer, talking about an office spotlight, this guy's got a past that, that would be interesting to talk about. I'll leave it at that. I don't know. And if people <laughs> knew who he was, like how many times a day you actually hear his voice on these channels? Not only on these channels, but he was also the voice of the Thanksgiving Day parade. parade. Right? Yeah, People For really NBC. don't care, Will. And he does no. Shark Week. And right, I just as know, I go over these highlights, I'm going below the Mendoza line. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah. Uh, Tracy Millman, of course. Uh, yes, I care. All right, I think I found our Mendoza line then. And I'm going to say a name. I've been saving this one. Doug Hurwitz. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do we rename the line to Doug Hurwitz? Doug Hurwitz line. <laughs> Doug Hurwitz is uh, uh. What does he do, Jason? I don't know. <laughs> no what? I don't know. He's no, yeah, he, he works on the website. He works he's on an Howard executive. Yeah. He's an executive. Oh, okay. he's, uh, he's part of. He's an executive. Well, he's part of my team. Holy shit! Does he work for you? I don't know. Oh, yes. No. Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I haven't yeah. looked at the full the full report chain. Yes, but yes. Uh, <laughs> hey. So all right. So we we decided that Doug Hurwitz. Um, uh, is the, 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 it's now called the Doug Hurwitz line. Hurwit line. line. So we'll refer to it now as the Doug Hurwitz line. And, uh, you know, if you think somebody is above it or below it, uh, let us know. Jim in Rhode Island, welcome to Back Office Radio. This is the greatest show on earth. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> no, I'm a huge fan. You guys, it's a great show. And, uh, Jason, you got balls. Uh, unbelievable. I used to cringe sometimes some of the stuff you take people up on, but it's just, it's awesome. But, uh, it works pro. Can I ask a question on that? Sure. Do you get paper refills for that? Is that the type of medicine that you have to get a paper refill, or, or does it say refill on your bottle? Or no, he gives me a six. He gives <laughs> this is fascinating. He gives me a six month prescription, and then uh, every month I scan it in with my little Walgreens app, and then then I go and pick it up. But uh, I got my last one in too late, I guess. Ah, uh, okay, that's what it was. Then. Mm. Okay, I didn't know if you had to do it because sometimes I know that uh, if you have to call it in. But I guess it was your fault then that you didn't get it. But that yeah, oh, totally my fault. I'm just I screwed my size. I said I'm an idiot. Hey, Jim, you know who Doug Hurwitz is? Say it again. Do you know who Doug Hurwitz is? Doug Kerwin. No, but I enjoy all the characters in the back of I am a listener. Believe me, I drive for a living up and down 95 right through New York every day, and I have serious since the day I started six years ago. I listen to every show. Excellent. On, on the channels, and it's, you guys are great. That's, thank, thank know. you, Jim. Thank you, Jim. If you want to call into the show, it's eight 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 Stern one hundred one. That's eight 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 seven eight three seven six one zero. Real quick, uh, real quick though, <laughs> Howard said yesterday that. 
people don't even know who Robin is. Mm-hmm. Now, what percentage of the audience do you think doesn't know Robin? Zero. You of really the think o- it's zero? Of the audience? Yeah. Of our audience? Yeah. Zero. I mean, that's what he was referring to, right? The audience? I don't know what... No, he couldn't have... He couldn't have been referring to the Howard Stern Show audience. He had to have been referring to just the general person on the but, street. But who cares about that person? I mean, I don't they're know. not listening to the show. Well, it sounds like you would care about that person when we were on terrestrial radio and you have, you know, whatever. But here we're catering, you know, we're HBO. It's like HBO going, you know, if you're, if you work at HBO, if you're a fan of HBO, you're going to know all the shit that's going on in HBO. I mean, you're in that universe. That's who you're catering to, your audience. I, I don't know. I, I would, I can't imagine. I, I, we have, Nine phone calls up, eight phone calls up. I, would, I can't imagine that all eight people, they all know who Robin is. They have to. It's 100%, right? I, I would guess, but... I'll, I'll put everyone back on hold. Howard's the expert. Al in Austin, do you know who uh, Robin is? Yeah, but... Okay, I'll put you on hold. Hold on, we'll come back to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but... Uh, Bob, you know who Robin is? Bob in East Meadow? Yeah, of course I do. Okay, thank <laughs> you. Eli in San Jose, do you know who the black woman who sits in the studio with Howard is? Oh, those big kids anywhere. Come on now. What's up? I said, I know some big titties anywhere. All right. Oh, yeah. that, that's Robin. Okay. Big titties equals Robin. Joe in Fort Lauderdale. Do you know who the newswoman of the Howard Stern show is? Sure do. What? Right. He, he said, said, sure do. Sure do. Sure do. He said, oh, oh, oh. Hold on a second. I'm going to pick back up. Hey, Joe in Fort Lauderdale, make sure to uh, get off the speakerphone when we go to you for real, okay? <laughs> Yeah. Thank All you. Right. I think we get the point. All right. Everybody, Everybody knows who Robin, Robin is. is. All right. So, and let me ask you, do you get upset when Howard says he hasn't listened to the show at all? No, not particularly. I don't either. First of all, I don't know if it's true. Right. I think it probably is true. He's busy in the middle of the day, like most people actually should be. <laughs> but uh, but I do think he should care a little more about what goes on in his channels. But, you know, he says, I live, I leave that in Tim's hand, and uh, he trusts Tim. And Tim, by the way, loves the show. Thank you, Tim, uh, for giving us this opportunity every week. We really appreciate it. He's here to get it done. Well, I did not see this note until right now. It said that you cringed when I got, quote, real with Howard on the air. What is that about? What happened? Well, I, I, I talked about it briefly on the news, but you, you were, you said, Howard, we're getting mixed messages here. Yeah. There's Tim telling us that he wants us to spend a lot of time working on different shows, and there's you saying we want, yeah, uh, to spend all the time on your show. So I don't know where we're supposed, what we're supposed to be doing. Right. right. And I don't know. It's just like yeah, Howard doesn't want to hear that shit. Honestly, he really doesn't. I know he doesn't, but I, I don't know. Who, I don't know what. I don't know what dog to follow. I guess is what I'm saying. I don't know. I don't know who the leader is. Who, I don't know. I don't know. I find it very confusing. But I love doing this show. Um, what yeah. do you think? Do you think I was? I shouldn't have said that. I don't know. Will, that did was you cry the second day without Lexapro? So you yeah, know. is that what it was? <laughs> <laughs> did you? Uh, did you uh, cringe? Did you cringe only at that moment, or did you cringe when I got up to go in the studio? No, not okay. when you got up to go. I mean, when you started getting a little heated, and I felt like he, you could totally be like, you know what, fuck it then. I'll just do what I do in the back office, and you'll never hear from me again. That's, that's I, cool. I felt like that was coming. Yeah. And and that did scare me a little bit. I, I think the best way to deal with Howard is just say, listen, I agree with you, Howard, <laughs> you know, and uh, move on from there. Because you're not, like, not going to win arguing with Howard. Right. right? You're 100% right. Now, what about... People outside of Howard, I know John Hine was not happy that back office, re, uh, back office radio was mentioned so much on the Howard Stern show, but most importantly got a ton of promos this week. Thank you again, Tim and John Hunnelock, one of the guys we mentioned on our Mendoza line, or I'm sorry, our, our Herwit line. Uh, uh, John, John Hunnelock, one of his jobs is scheduling the promos for the show. Yeah, I heard it was a mistake that we got so many. Oh, promos. it was a mistake? Oh, it was well, a good mistake. Yeah. Though. We're not complaining. It's my favorite mistake. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'd be angry if I was John Hine. You hear like four back office radio promos and none for it his show and teddy how did you feel about scott the pace saying no one cares about you uh, uh, it's scott oh, the pace. can Everything... i rephrase that question yeah how did you care about the director of a tv show of the tv show of a radio show saying that you nobody knows you i don't care yeah, okay. it's, again <laughs> anything that comes out of his mouth is just in, show fucking blows <laughs> in one ear out the other well do you think that scott is trying to sabotage oh absolutely show? Because there was a couple, there was an incident a few weeks ago where, uh, I don't know, in passing, I think we called Brian Phelan an idiot because he didn't vote. Right. And then well, I'll tell you right now, hey, Brian, you're an idiot for not voting. Well, he's <laughs> an idiot because if you've heard, you heard that rap on the air the other day about <laughs> how Phelan? he's worried about the world getting destroyed. I mean, could you sound any dumber than he sounded yesterday? I like really? the fact that Brian and I kind of watch those documentaries the same way. Like, yeah, there's a solar something in like four years. The discovery, Neil deGrasse, that guy said it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you watch us. You go, who's the guy that's listening to this bullshit? You go, yep, <laughs> you know. There's the asshole right there. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I'm sorry. Go on with your. your so, so he he just happened to tell. 
Brian that in passing that we called him an idiot, and I think that was to try and piss off right. Brian. Right. And then he makes lots of comments on the no- news about how he doesn't think we deserve a show, and I think ultimately he's just angry that we've trashed him a couple times on the air. I, he totally, he's also becoming, by the way, over the last uh, three to six months, he's becoming a much bigger on-air presence. Like, he goes down to the wrap-up show on a weekly basis, I think, even with stuff that doesn't concern him necessarily. Right, there was a period when he said he would never go back on the show. Never go down there, and, and then he would only go down there if they asked for him specifically, or if we were talking about him and he wanted to comment, but now he's just on there a lot. And that's not a complaint, that's just an observation, that, that he... He likes being on the air like everybody else around here. Well, it seems part. like he's getting along better with Gary. When he was at war with That's Gary, he was never in that room. He could, uh, yeah, well, he couldn't remember uh, not saying that he thought that Gary was the worst producer. Do you think he hates the show more than anybody else on the staff? I think he... Uh, no. My nominees for that would be DePace hates it. John Hine... He's not a fan, but I don't think he hates it more I than can't anything. tell where his emotions lie on anything. Not, well, that's yeah. John Hine. <laughs> Brandano... Hates it. Uh, Lisa G... Hates it. Howard Stern... Hates it. Indifferent to it. JD? Hates it. Okay. And out of those, that group, who hates it the most? Steve Brandano. Yeah. yeah. I, I think so. What I think it's Steve Brandano. Yeah. Brandano, right? Yeah, well, he's the only one that's written a three-page letter about it. <laughs> and he's I only- know, I'm pissed that didn't come out on the air the other day that it was not only an email, it was a three-page email. Yeah, yeah. And well, the other thing is, too, Steve's like the first person to quit the show. I mean, he's the first person in the back office to say, I, even Lisa, she hasn't gone so far to say, as I won't appear on your show. Yeah, we need to talk about that in a minute, too. <laughs> we'll, we'll get to that. And um, and so finally, to, to wrap up this conversation, you know, Steve Brandano actually did have a good point on how to say, you know, what are the Q ratings for the guys here? Who are people that the fans like and know? And so what I did was I went on Twitter and, and he suggested, why don't you look at everyone's Twitter followers? By the way, way better method than going out on the street and asking you, random homeless sure. people right. if they know who <laughs> JD is. These are people who are clearly interested in the Howard Stern show and now presented with a platter of personalities from the show. They get to pick who they want to follow or not. Obviously, Howard is number one by far. Um, so we'll skip him. So I, I kind of grouped this. There are a couple people here on staff that have over a hundred thousand followers. Uh, Robin Quiver. Uh, the 230,000 JD, 157,800. Might Ronnie, be the most depressing thing I've ever is heard. Is he number three, JD? Number three, yeah, behind yeah. Howard, number two. Howard's list. got like a million, right? Yeah, one, one, three, three, and then Robin, and then. The, well, no, the Robin, yeah, Howard, Robin, JD. Ronnie is only 800 followers behind JD, wow. so he's close. Funny. And, uh, Sal Governale with 113,000. Wow. And Benji. Sal, Sal actually deserves that many Twitter followers. Yeah, he's good on Twitter. Foreskin Friday was one of the best things ever. <laughs> and Benji. Made my week. Benji with 100,000. So those are your top, uh, your top ones there. By the way, do you know Benji's verified? Benji has 99,000 followers. 99,800. They he's verified. At, and he's verified. They just want to look at hot pictures of Elisa, his girlfriend. And it's well worth it, by the way. Who are we waving at over here? Lino. Lino. Lino, in studio. Okay. Lino I just farted here. in your chair. <laughs> oh, my God. Lino's that uh, Catholic guy we were just talking about. All right. So then in the next group of uh, 50,000 ish uh, followers, you have John Hine leading the charge with over 88,000. Richard Christie with 66,000. Lisa G, number one in the newsroom by far. How does she have 50,000 followers? 50. Who are the idiots following her? Thousand oh, we, followers. For, we forgot about Gary, by the way. 220. Oh, 22,000 followers. Right. I always forget about Gary. Baba Booey, too. 200, oh, how many? Nice. So he's right below Robin? 222. Yeah, oh, he's right below Robin. And of course, you can see Gary's Nerdist podcast on there. Okay, so so it goes Howard, Gary. It goes Howard, Robin, Gary, JD, Ronnie, Sal, Benji, John, Richard, Lisa G. And I'm at 46, 7. But wait, wait, one second again. Back to Lisa. How does she have 50 plus thousand followers? I have no idea. You know, Is it all from the Stern Show? Is it from her days at. Didn't Black you, radio? Don't you remember the sweet and meat? Hello? Yeah. Lines down the street. Those <laughs> idiots? Lines down the street. Um, and then, okay, and I come in, I'm not really at 50,000, but it's close. It's 46,700. But then there's a big drop off after that. And we get into the uh, 20,000 plus area. We have Shuli, almost 29,000. John Lieberman with 25,000. By the way, I highly suggest going to John Lieberman's Twitter page on, on the computer because you know how you can do those big banners now? He has the gayest looking banner. I, I, he has some <laughs> picture. He looks so weird and, and, and toolish in that I, I really suggest you go check out. Does John his head Lieberman. even fit in one of those profiles? <laughs> well, that's what's funny about it. It's like this picture. It's like a full, it's almost a full body picture of him with his arms crossed, like a news, you know, like one of those news stances and oh. his hair's all done up. Oh, it looks God. like he's wearing makeup oh, or something. God, look at him. <laughs> he's got the, 
the crossed arms pose. Look, you know, li- like, literally, his head does not fit in the picture. No. <laughs> what is it, Reporter John? Go check it out on Twitter at Reporter at John. Reporter John. Yeah. Uh, Will, you're at a uh, twenty-five. 000. You're just two hundred behind Lieberman at uh, twenty-five thousand. Nice. And you should tweet more. You're I really never good. really tweet. Yeah. Uh, Steve Brandano. Steve, the uh, what he's is got a lot, called? right? He's the got one point seven. How many? Twenty one thousand. Yeah, twenty one thousand. Yeah, that's awesome. But he tweets a lot, and he's he's good on there. I'm, you know, yes. terrible. Uh, Steve, uh, Rachel Fine, uh, with the big boobs, and yeah, if the, you want uh, to start her tits, it's great. I do, and I, I do recommend too, you follow her. <laughs> she has twenty thousand three hundred followers, and Tim Sabian is right behind her with pretty much an even twenty thousand followers. Uh, that is our program director. And by the way, Tim tweets a lot. You guys should follow him. And then, Why and- are we doing this again? I don't oh, know. this is a Q rating. A Q rating. We're going down everybody. Well, and but now you know. Now we're getting to the names that we kind of had on that 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 Herwitt Her- line. Herwitt was, line, which is Mike Angie. I'm sorry, Jim McClaw. I love you, Jim McClaw. You're a big part of our show on Howard 101. Doug Goodstein. Teddy- oh, I saw that thirteen thousand for Gangie. I thought that was his weight. <laughs> oh. oh, Teddy microphone at nine thousand five hundred. But they're all my friends. Brian Fallon at eight thousand three hundred. Does that Richie- mean they give you free drugs? <laughs> Richie <laughs> Wilson at five thousand. But then check this out, Will, because this is embarrassing. Both Ronnie has a fan club on Twitter called the Mund Fan Network. I have a fan club on Twitter called the Jason Kaplan Fan. They're club. both embarrassing. They're well. Let me tell you something. Ronnie's uh. Uh, Twitter uh, fan club is one followed by 1,900 people. My fan club is followed by about 800 people, and we beat several other people in the office. Our fan clubs have beaten now several <laughs> other people the in the office. Club. By the way, I highly recommend you follow uh, at Jason Cap Fan Club or at Jason Cap. How fan. do you become a member of your fan club? You just go and you start following the guy. Oh. You eat yourself into a. Yeah, coma. I was going to say, I thought your cholesterol has to be above three bills. <laughs> it's at Jason Cap Fan Club on Twitter. And actually, we just picked up a 10 new followers. Hey, I'll welcome a 10 new followers. That's almost as good as uh, Lexapro, right? <laughs> oh, not really. I'm not wish. really. <laughs> and, then, and then the last, I got three last names here, and we'll end this uh, long discussion. Ben Barto, who we mentioned in the Herwitt line, 556 followers. Al Ragon, Alfred Ragon, on Twitter. Our, board our op, producer, our board op. The second hardest working person here outside of John Honolock with 410 <laughs> followers. <laughs> And finally, Tim's new assistant, the opera singer, Elaine, 47 followers. Let's pump her up a little bit. We love Elaine. Because she's new. She's She's new. new. That doesn't count. So that's it. So those are the Q ratings. So basically, uh, yeah, I think I think we. Had I don't it know right. exactly what that proved. Absolutely nothing. It just took up a lot of time. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> uh, Al from Austin, welcome to Back Office Radio. How's it going, man? I want to say I love you guys. All of your annoying personalities give you more of a give a shit factor. I don't think you should call it a line of Demarco or whatever the fuck you're calling it, but mm-hmm. it's the give a shit line. And my give a shit line used to end right below Steve Brandano, mm-hmm. but that letter he wrote was was so gay. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I think I, I know the reason why. He, he's a type 1 diabetic, right? Yes. Don't uh, blame the beats, man. <laughs> he's well, got that shit I under think, control. Hey, no, you know, listen, I'm a type 1 diabetic, too, so I, I can say this. I think he had low blood sugar when he wrote that. That's what I'm going to say. It was a temporary lapse of gayness. Um, or reason, which, you know, turn into gayness and cause them to write that letter. Is that what happens when you have low blood sugar? You get gay? I've never had low blood sugar in my life, so I wouldn't know. That's terrible. (laughs) I've never had low blood sugar. (laughs) (laughs) That's Uh, true. Well, we have have a ton to talk about. We still have the State of the Office, uh, State of Steve, we're calling it. I think we even have a sounder for it. We have, of course, our Douche of the Week nominees. We have Page 69s. We have, uh, we're doing an appearance this week in Canada. We have so much coming up. Please join us, 888-STERN-101 on Howard 101. We'll be right back. This is Back Office Radio with Will and Jason on Howard 101. It's just like the Howard Stern Show without the talent and personality. This is Back Office Radio with Will and Jason on Howard 101. Some people will have such high standards. We, uh, there are, there's a couple girls that work here at Sirius. Oh, boy. That are just gorgeous. They're, I know. They're just gorgeous. And there was one girl that, that walked by uh, during the start of the show. No, no, not only that, we were coming over to this studio yeah. from the Howard Stern compound, and she was leaning over the desk. And she has the greatest ass it's unbelievable. in the history of ass. And I'm not, I'm not arguing with that. Oh. Now, stop. Yes, you are. <laughs> so we come in here, and we go, I go, Teddy, man, did you see that girl's ass? It's <laughs> unfucking believable. You go, my wife's okay. Eh, eh, you know. My wife's is better. My wife's is better. What is it wrong is. with you? Who the fuck wants to hear that? Sorry. My wife's is oh, better. Oh, fuck. You put me in a weird position because the poppy's hot. 
Mm-hmm. But that's that's a perfect mm-hmm. ass. I, I mean, you know what? Bring Poppy in. Let's take a look at her because I, I need a side by side. No, I won't. Teddy skip, needs another six months of level. marriage. Yeah. <laughs> Believe me, he'll be eating that ass in the you're, middle of the hall. You're probably right. <laughs> Teddy hasn't looked at Poppy sober in about ten years, though. So I don't know. That if could be it. It's true. It's true. No, Poppy is absolutely beautiful. But this girl here, Marone. Yeah, exactly. I never I'm used not, the word Marone, I'm but not, Marone. I'm not. <laughs> I don't even know what they're with that at all. <laughs> Teddy, what do you think about Jason? He's, he's, a he's weak off, right now. That's what I, we were just saying. The so am I not being funny? I want something? this. No, you're, you're being funny. You're you're, hilarious. You just seem a little off. I like, am like, off. Like I you're like you don't it, trust yourself. Look, message to people anywhere. <laughs> today he's weak. If you want to hurt Jason, today is the day. This is the day JD has to get down. Yeah, here. JD. I mean, come on, <laughs> he's totally he's limping right now. It's like any second. I'm like a wounded animal that got out of a fight and I'm bleeding bad. You know, totally. Yeah, yeah. Right. Finish him. Finish him. Well, if anyone has a finishing move, it's got to be JD. Bob in East Meadow, welcome to Back Office Radio. Yeah, boys. I uh, listen. I really love the idea of the show, and I liked the show the first couple of weeks. But when you guys revealed that you know you can't just say anything, and then you stop talking about Lisa G, you know you should kind of change the name of the show to Back Office Radio because it, 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 it's. That is the name of the it's show. Different. Yeah, back That's orifice. It. I like that. Oh, orifice. Orifice. Uh, I, uh, first of all, we can talk about Lisa G all we want. Listen, uh, nobody here uh, outside of Howard, and I don't even think Howard can talk about whatever they want whenever they want on the radio. There's parameters, and you know. We still have to work here. We still have to work here. <laughs> uh, let's face facts. Uh, this show doesn't bring in any money. We don't have any cachet or clout to, to you know, like Howard does right. and say, I, I make this company tens of billions of dollars every year. We're two uh, and a half idiots. But trust me. <laughs> That's a good one. But trust me, we're going as far to the line as we can and you're that's the half, it by the way teddy what i Sorry. said you're the half yeah Thank can you, you stop tweeting or whatever the jd texting? just texted me who's ass <laughs> oh the girl yeah Sorry. i don't even know her name i don't know her name anyway lots of people on twitter listening to this show let me just uh want, run through this real quick somebody's asking what tim tim's assistant twitter account is and it is uh l oh, i hate spelling crap just look it up her name's elaine alvarez she's very here i'll retweet her on my twitter account here and now you could all follow tim's assistant I think uh, Steve Brown says some of us follow Lisa G in the hopes that she'll eventually tweet a sexy photo. Well, keep waiting. Exactly. Um, <laughs> soon, soon when that book comes out. Yeah. She ain't getting any younger. Uh, somebody else says, um, I'm looking forward to more David Hyde talk. That comes from Ryan and Raleigh. Uh, and uh, I don't know. Oh, somebody says, Jason just said it, uh, you guys have a platter of personalities. Is there any part of your brain that isn't always thinking about food? I was going to say, you read that because it had a platter in it, right, Jason? <laughs> well, I said platter, yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, if you'd like to call in and join, it's uh, 888 Stern 101. And if you'd like to follow me on Twitter, it's at SiriusJ. I, I, I can't believe I'm losing to Lisa G. That's fucking bullshit. Uh, we do have another State of the Office that we didn't get to, and it's about one of our favorite topics on the show. So favorite that we've given it his own name. State, State of Brandano. <laughs> Steve Brandano has a lot to say about other people's shows. After chastising Howard about not having the black keys on, he wrote a note to Will and Jason explaining why he thinks they should cancel back office radio. What I'm really trying to say, there's no good that comes out of it. They don't do a segment called Great Job of the Week or anything like that. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's going to get bad. But since the email went out and Will and Jason goofed on him, Steve has acted like nothing has happened. How can Steve go on as if everything is normal? And... Who is and isn't happy about it? Yeah, state of Steve, I mean, it really has become. I mean, Steve, real quick, the back off the situation is Steve sits right in the middle of us. So I sit on his left, you sit on his right, and he's had some issues with us and back off his radio, and, and we've had some issues with him regarding it, and it's, it's, it's a daily thing. I mean, every day the three of us have to sit next to each other. Now, Will. Wait, before we get in okay. this, into this, though, I want to say Steve... We implore you to come down here. We would love to have this conversation with you on the air. So I don't know what you're, where you stand now with the show, but if you want to, we'd love to have you. Studio 3. So uh, the Thursday before Thanksgiving was very weird for us. We both got to work, and we had this unexpected letter in our in our email box, a three-page long letter uh, from Steve explaining to us uh, very uh, emotionally and heartfeltly about why he doesn't think we should continue doing back office radio about the way that, we're doing it now. The way we're doing it, and we probably shouldn't be doing it at all, and that I'm mean to JD, and that he fears for things that might happen in the future, and he's upset that we made fun of David Height's hair, because who are we to make fun of David Height, and on and on and on. And and the important part was, if we continue to do the show, he's not going to have any part of the show. Well, he's not going to have any part of the show to begin with, and then right. he doesn't want to be our friend. Right. And then we talked about it on the show, and he was in front of the... He came down to set up for John Heinstein. It was show, uncomfortable. And it was uncomfortable, and he refused to talk. He just said, right. like, one word, fine. You know what? If he doesn't want anything to do with our show anymore, that's fine. But then later, that same day, 
he went and did the intern show and did about a 55 minute summit on back office radio. It was all about back office radio. And, yeah. and I think the excuse was, well, this affects the interns too, because they're in the back office, but you could kind of apply that to anything that happens. If you don't want to talk about the show, I'm sure you could find other topics. Oh, great. Get, get Steve oh, just walked good, in. Good, good, good. So the, the thing that we wanted to get to was, so I came in. Friday morning. So now it's the day after. We had right. this weird morning with Steve. We didn't really talk all afternoon. Then Steve goes on the intern show and, and does his thing. And we came in Friday and I didn't know if it was going to be weird or not. And, and there it wasn't, was, right? No, it wasn't. Okay. And that, ho- wait, 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 wait. Wait, hold on. We're, we're building up And here. this is not, conf- <laughs> we're not getting confrontational about it so right now. I come <laughs> in and, and Steve, Steve acts like nothing happened. Right. And I love, I love that. I'm like, thank God. Like, I wish everybody was like this. Like, like, I wish like when Ralph and I have a thing, like we could just come in the next day and act like nothing happened because I hid having, you know, a half hour fucking, you know, emotional to talk with a friend and blah, blah, blah. So I'm through, and, and I was supposed to go to Steve's house that weekend to watch football and, you know, we had this completely normal day together. We did geek time. Everything went great. And afterwards, I'm like, so am I still coming over this weekend? He's like, yeah, of course you are. And I came over Sunday. We had an excellent, right. excellent time. So basically, ever since Thursday, ever since the intern show, yeah, things between me and Steve have been like nothing ever happened. Right. And I'm thrilled with that. Okay. I wish everybody was like that. How do you feel? Well, no, I mean, things have been as normal. We've had a great relationship, but I'm not. I, I don't like it as much as you do. I'm not as comfortable with that. I, I I felt like there was no resolution to it. I don't know where he really stands with <laughs> Hold us. <on>, guys, <laughs> you guys took my email. Yeah. And read it. Some of it. And what, what I said, said in do. the email. Yeah, yeah. No, okay. I don't have a problem with anything right, right, right. that you guys have done to me. You guys keep saying, like, he's taking this personally. You guys haven't hurt me in any way. I don't feel uh, like... All I said to you guys was, if you keep doing this, no one's going to be friends in the office. I thought what Jason did to JD was yeah, really messed up. you're making it up. sound like it was a warning as opposed to... You, it, it, That's what, the letter felt much more like an ultimatum. Like, Jason, if you continue to do this show, we are not going to be friends. Jason on Wednesday, if right. that guy was there on Thursday or continued to be here, I could not be friends with that guy. And that's what I was saying in the in the letter. But, now, after, but the next day, Jason was calmed down and it was fine. And yeah, so but after, I was fine with him, You know that the too. show is going to continue and you know that, you, that we left things kind of weird on after the show on Thursday. So it's like... We just pretend like nothing happens. Yeah, Don't but you think that's kind of weird? We did another show after you guys, and when we came back, you guys were gone. Fair enough. So, but, but then the next time we see you, which is Friday morning. Right. I was nervous walking I was into the office weird. Friday I don't know morning. if you noticed. And I, I, I nervous... I, I, Nervous in the sense that, like, is this, sorry, I didn't mean to talk about it, but I'm nervous in the sense that, is it going to be weird between me and Steve? Like, I definitely walked in with some hesitation Friday morning going, what am I walking in? Like I said to you guys before, it's not, I'm fine. I'm fine. So did you feel after you got that off your chest, it was kind of life as normal? I wanted you guys to know where I stood with what I felt about the show and how it was on that, that Wednesday. Because, and like I said to you that morning, I know the the letter was addressed to both of you guys. My problem was that Jason was out of control, and it didn't seem like you say you were going to defend JD that day. My only problem with you is that it seems to me like you're encouraging Jason to be that way. Where all what I'm trying to do is discourage Jason from being that way and not pr- promote it on. It's weird to uh to compare him to this, but it would be like if I saw my friend beating his wife. And I'm just like, one one guy is going, one guy is going like, hey, man, I know he's beating his wife, but it's not my wife and it makes good radio. And I'm just saying, (laughs) hey, man. I can't be friends with someone who's beating his wife. And by the way, I, the it would guy be great I radio know, if you would, if you were beating your wife, and Steve, I'm not talking Steve about you, Teddy. I'm not talking Finish about you. Punch you, punch. And, and that's and and that's all. And, and you know, and it's like I didn't like seeing Jason like that. Certainly with JD, who I've seen both be cool together, and that's where I stand. It's not. And and like I said, I don't want you guys to cancel the show. I just don't want to see that craziness that we saw on Wednesday. Well, for uh, again, I don't want to rehash everything. I, I don't. You know, I I. I Thought I came off like a douche personally on the wrap-up show, but I don't think I treated JD horribly, and I still don't think I treated JD you, horribly. And you say I admitted no, I do. No, you I, did. I, you no, did. I didn't. You said on Wednesday the way you were, you were yeah. so fired up, yeah. and you wanted to ruin his life. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the guy that I don't like. You right. weren't. And like then he that. apologized. <laughs> okay. All, All right. right. <laughs> so that's great that he did, but that's that's crazy and scary, and and I didn't like that. Well, and I can't stress this enough to you guys. You can say what you want about me or whatever. It's not. You guys keep going. No, no one hates the show more than Steve. No one uh, takes it so personally like Steve. I'm fine with you guys. Uh, I'm looking forward to this weekend. And uh, I just don't want to see all of us hating each other. That's all. Hey, real quick. Nelson, Does that make sense to you guys? 
Yes, but I, yes, I, 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 I think you're, 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 so again, so now you're just concerned about other people. Yes, so don't, that's don't, what I always said. So don't but be concerned I don't know about if I other fully people. believe that. Yeah. I okay. think you were upset about things, the comments were made on the show. When you say, you know, somebody makes a comment and then somebody else reacts to that comment and they right. make a comment and it builds, I think you're talking about yourself. I don't think no. you're talking about JD or no, John I am. I, you I, are. So you I were am, upset. But that you works were pissed for about some of the shit that we said about you. No, I said that I, I'm not going to, like, I, I think I said on the intern show that night, like when you guys say, like, you're making uh, comments about my sex life or whatever, and then I got on the intern show and was like, I think I slept with more people than the two of them combined. That's yeah. the stuff I am talking about. If we do that, then you hear that, and you guys want to make a comment, and yeah, we would build, and I don't want to do that with you guys. Me, personally, I think... Other people feel the exact same way and would do that, but I, but I don't care that much about it. All right, enough of this. I'm going to end this right now, and I'm going to say that my interpretation of everything Steve said is that he's more concerned about how other people react to us than himself, which I think he should not worry about. How I, I'm a big boy, and so are you, and we can handle how we talk to other people. I'm worried about my friends in the office, you guys included. I also think Steve's worried about himself. And, uh, and, and bringing up comments. And, you know, again, without getting into it, I mean, you do that on the intern show. Maybe you've changed, but mm-hmm. things that have been, things that I have said in the office, not thinking that anyone was, was listening or, or, or taking note, ends up on the intern show. So, so you know, your hands okay, are dirty well, too. Then take, please, <laughs> please, please. Tim, who's listening to this and loves the show and anybody else, I don't want to do the intern show anymore. Whoa. My friends are way more important <laughs> to me than this. And if it, and if it means that, uh, I can be friends with all the people that I'm friends with, please, I no longer want to do the intern show. But we've never, wow. okay. Our friendship- back off is radio exclusive? I yeah, I guess so. I, 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 mean, just turned white. I think I scream it in the office all the time and yeah, have for three years. Down but, here. Did you uh, just quit the intern show? No, I didn't quit the intern <laughs> no. show. No, the you want to be show fun. is my responsibility. Are you, you're angry at T. Jones. You're begging people to stop no, I didn't say don't listen just, to the intern show. I said, if it's going to mean that what I'm doing on the intern show, which I don't think we've done in a long time, it, 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 is, it, it makes me contradict this or can end this, uh, not end this show, but end the way you're talking about me right now, then please, I don't want to host the intern no, show. I, I don't want to trash people. And if people feel like they're being spied on in the office, then I don't want to do this show like I haven't for a while. The intern show has been on for a long time. You and I have had almost zero issues over Agreed. it, but it exists. I mean, yeah. do, you, do you feel the same way about Howard's show, though? Like when, I mean, it's okay when it's Howard. It is okay when it's Howard. He employs us. He's a megastar, and, and, and we and all want to be like him. The wrap up show does a lot of the same bullshit. The, I mean, John tries mm, to be subtle about it, but he certainly asks the, questions. It's to different try and to track have people. Sal come down and have Sal shoot himself in the foot, than come down and report on what Sal is doing, or he'll have me come down and throw. You guys do a great job on the show, <laughs> but yeah. I'm sorry. I mean, but- I, I, this is interesting just because I feel like this is more honest conversation than we've had in the back office this entire week. I mean, I know we've been friends and and the rest of it, but like I said, I just didn't know where I stood with you and. uh I guess it's nice to know on some level. I, I got no problem with you guys personally. I can't stress that enough. Brian, on the phone, you think Steve is awesome. I do. I, I think uh, when he made that stand with Howard about the black keys, right or wrong, you could tell he wasn't kissing ass. He was giving his uh, honest, object, you know, objective opinion. Opinion about it, and I think that's what he's doing with you guys regarding uh, this situation about other people uh, and their feelings. Steve feels a protective nature, and that's why he's uh, saying those things to you, writing that letter. Because you know, let's face it, folks like JD may not have the ability to defend themselves, and Steve does. He's a very smart guy, and uh, I think that's what what you got here. Well, if the office is looking for a... If if the office is looking for a savior, Steve is your man. Ken in Maryland, welcome to Back Office Radio. How's it going, Jason? Good. Now we have to pick up a negative Steve call. Got to keep everything even here. (laughs) Yeah, I'm going to keep it positive right here real quick. Uh, Jason, you are the man. Everything you touch on this station goes to gold. I think you're awesome on the air. Oh, yeah. I want to say that, Steve, I'm a pretty intelligent young guy, too, man, and let me just tell you that when you get to the point of saying something, (laughs) yeah, yeah, I mean, I I don't have any reason to be right now, but uh, I think uh, Steve isn't very humble either, and when you get to the point where you're saying the same thing over and over again and you just start kind of whining about it, it really takes away from the message that you're trying to present. What's the message uh, that I'm trying to present? Right Do you now. get it? Wait, well, basically what you did, you got pissed off because they were getting more attention than you, and you tried to redirect it and put the attention on everyone else and put a negative attention on Jason and them. And then whenever it blew up in your face and Jason called you out on it, you just started whining and trying to change your story. Right, and that's what I've done for I've seven years, Will and Jason, is tried to get attention on myself. No, no. I don't agree with that. Okay. I don't agree with that. But you did bring up a good point on the intern show now. 
We want to hear the clip. Steve created a new segment for us on Back Office Radio, and it is called... I love your segments. <laughs> great job of the week. Yes. Oh, nice. yes. Oh, so Steve won the full award. A great job of the week to somebody here in Back Office in an the, effort to time. make it more positive. It was time. And it is time. And Steve, I thank you for your contributions to the show. And here we have our first winner for great One. job of the week. Are you ready? Yeah. Uh, the award it better goes not be to, Teddy. The award goes to... The staff of Back Office Radio. Hey! hey! Jim McClure, hey! Alago, Teddy Mitter, Will bye. Murray, Jason bye. Kaplan. You have brought great Don't Ryan attention. The intern. You are, and Ryan, the intern, of course. You have brought great attention to uh, our... our uh, one, wait, one thing yeah. before Steve leaves. They all deserve it, by the way. <laughs> Does this mean you, you will come back? And, that's the one thing that bothers you more than anything. What? If you have a beef with us, I want you to come down and just address it with us yeah. on the air. Don't Because you're, it's not like you're when not I, talking about it at all. No. You're, you're talking in the news. You're talking about it on the intern show. What I mean is I'm not, by not contributing to this show, I mean, I'm not going to tell you if, if I saw Sal take a weird point. Fair enough, something. but you will, if we have a, an, an issue with you, you yes. will come down and confront it. Yes, I like that Thank you can you. do that. Right, will, absolutely. we have spent almost an entire hour talking about back office radio. It is time to move on and start throwing people under the bus. We're that is Steve's yetis. favorite moment. So uh, we're gonna. <laughs> so coming up next is Douche of the Week nominees, and we are going to talk to Tracy Millman. We're going to talk about going up to uh, Will and I have a big appearance coming up. We have the underreported Howard 100 News Story of the Week. We are back to getting to all your gossip, all your bus throwing underness that you were looking for here. <laughs> Alexa Crow is back here. I can't. I'm, I can't think straight. I admit it. You're listening to us on Howard 101. <laughs> You're listening to Back Office Radio with Will and Jason on Howard 101. Throwing staffers under the bus since 2012. Back Office Radio with Will and Jason. Welcome back to Back Office Radio. I am Jason Kaplan. Will Murray right next to me. Teddy Knitter. Howard Gohn. Got a Howard TV crew down here. Rob Martin and Joe. Joe, how the hell do you say your last name? Miss Mikulaszewski. Little two inside. They, well done. Joe Mik- Mikulaszewski definitely falls below the Doug Hurwit line. But hey, listen, he's a great guy. <laughs> he's happy about that. He is. I met Joe a long time ago. We lived in Hoboken together, and he was starting a Jake, family. Below, trying below to buy a house. Oh, below, below the line. line. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Enough of you, Joe. No one cares. Hey, we haven't done Douche of the Week yet, and we have to nominate our <laughs> Douche of the Week. Teddy, why don't we start with you, brother? It's obvious. Mine is obvious. It's Scott DePace. He's a dick. Uh, a balding... Right wing act. He's he's just. Teddy, keep, keep your comments to yourself. Oh, keep your comments to yourself. What? Did, what? Did, Show why fucking are you blows. He just he knew it too, and he's like, I thought you retired my jersey, and I said, Well, you're gonna have to come out of retirement for this one because he just kept. He was using me as all of his examples on the wrap up show the other day, and uh, and it's just for me, it's a no brainer. It's it's got to pace. He's a douche. Well, there you have it. Uh, I like that, and uh, the only thing I don't like about that is that um. Uh, yes, I think Scott's out to get the show. Now he's gonna like get all riled up here in Teddy Cole. Yeah, well, and I don't know what the rule is. He's I'll been retired, lectured. so can I take him out of retirement? I'm not sure. By the way, someone just tweeted he me that he nominated J- that JD Harmeyer does have a fan club on Twitter. It is at JD Harm Fan Club, and he has 54 followers. Suck it, JD. Jason Cap mm. Fan Club kicks your ass. Too much Thank Twitter you. talk. You're right. Uh, Jason nominated. Oh, I'm reading my own notes. I nominate. <laughs> Because I love him, by the way. He is one of my favorite all time guests on the show, but I think he made a huge mistake quitting his TNA job. And for that reason and that reason alone, I am naming Eric the actor. Douche of the week. Although I seriously am thinking about changing it to Wolfie. I might just change it to Wolfie mid show because I forgot that he asked for his own theme song. There's nothing douche. His own jingle. There's not, there's nothing douchier than that. It is douchey. Will, who do you nominate? Uh, last week, you just heard all the stuff that happened with Steve Brandano, a lot of drama in the back office. And then I heard a news clip of John Hines saying this. I really respect what he did. It takes a lot of it takes a lot of guts, it takes a lot of balls, especially in this environment, to do something like that. And good for him taking a stand. And uh, I mean, Will and Jason are, are his, so his, two of his closest friends. And um, I hope they understand what Steve's trying to tell them and not take it as your show sucks or, you know, we don't like your show. That's not what he's saying. He's saying sometimes you know friendship comes first wow windy sometimes friendship comes first well he had a, a lot to say there about <laughs> about steve brandano's letter yeah we must have helped him write it or something but then i talked to john hein you know the next day right. after he had done that news story and he informed me that he knows nothing about the letter that steve wrote to us and he hadn't even heard the segment that we did 
about Steve. What the fuck was he saying to the news? Uh, listen, I think Steve's his boy. Yeah, well, and Steve he was kind of defending Steve. But yeah, it was, I, 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 I heard, I was like, come on, man. I mean, see, what if, what, what if John read the letter and was like, no, Steve's a douche. He should have never sent this letter. Like, right. he doesn't know what he, he doesn't know. Right. But so, therefore, John Hine is my douche of the week. Of the week. Well, I, I say that John is two faced, but that's not enough faces. There are any more. Uh, <laughs> like an definitely two chin. <laughs> De- no, definitely two chin. You know, it's hard. I think he's trying to play both sides of the, uh, forget, forget the Steve thing. Just yeah. in general, it's John, you cannot. Pin John down on a, on a feeling or an opinion or emotion. I don't, I, you know, it's one of the things I don't like about him, honestly, is that I feel that sometimes I don't know when he's being honest and some, when he's being political. He has taken the show better than anybody, though. He has. The back you know why? Why? He's fucking smart and he's being political. He's smart, but <laughs> it's smart, so give him some credit. All right, so, uh, again, to, to, ha- to go back a little bit to the who knows who you and I are or anybody is, uh, we have a big appearance coming up this weekend. This is weird. <laughs> you and I never get to do appearances ever. Um, but a, a couple years ago, these, these guys, these great guys up in Canada, they're uh, a family, they own a business, they have some money, and they're giant Howard Stern fans. So a few years ago, they hired Richard and Sal to go out and party with them, essentially, and hang with them for the weekend. And they went to go do it the following year, and Richard Christie wasn't available. So then they turned to ha- asking if Sal and JD could come. And I believe they offered JD somewhere in the 2,000-plus range. Right, to come up and party. To come up and party with them for two days. And right. JD said no. No. Like an asshole. Couldn't leave his apartment. Right. So then they went to me and you. And uh, talking about our Q ratings, I think we got offered JD's 2000 to split between the two of us. Which so, my head was spinning. By the, the way, to my friend. offered to hang out with me. Nobody wants to hang out with me. To my friends in Canada, I apologize if you don't like us talking about uh, the money you spend. I- I'm not one of those guys here that doesn't like. I- I'll talk about money all day long. Yeah. yeah, this is what I was offered. So this year they came back and they cut Sal out this year. Yeah, I know. I went back and told Sal we were going up there this weekend. He's like, what? what? I'm not, I'm out. So these guys are spending. I think, I think we lowballed them. That was the problem. I think so too. And you know what? Good. Uh, so they are paying to have, uh, me, you, and Steve Brandano. We're flying up Friday after geek time and we're going to party with the Canada guys. It's, it's a, somebody's birthday party. Uh, uh, and, uh, yeah. Uh, what is that? It's so weird. Uh, all right. So last year we go and, Will and I have never done an appearance before. And this isn't like the block party where you go and say something up on stage. This isn't like a meet and greet where people come and go, oh, hey, Will, nice to meet you. Can you sign something? This was literally just hang out with these no, guys. No, it was hanging out yeah. with these guys. And I don't know. I'm not very good at, you know, talking with new people. And Jason's much better at it, even mm-hmm. though he claims he's not. And Sal's the best. You know, he's, 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 you know, he can talk to anybody in a room. So it was great having Sal to hang on. Sal was like year. the MC. Yeah. We yeah. just kind of hang behind Sal and laugh at his dopey jokes. And you know, that's it. Now we have no Sal and we know Brandano's not going to take the lead. So now Jason, I'm counting on you to be the entertainment for the I'm going to have to be the Sal. I know I am because <laughs> I'm the, I'm that guy, but Sal really was like the mayor of that party last time. Like he knew everybody. He's making jokes. He's walking up to like their grandfather and going, Hey, grandfather, so and so, you know, let's get you laid. You know, he's like, he's like the mayor of the party. And it's, it's- are you prepared to whip out your cock? <laughs> Sal style? How many times did he do it? Like- First of all, when I take out my, when I take out my, my, my dick, there's nothing whip about it. Is it? <laughs> oh. It's just kind of like a, yeah. <laughs> Oh, well, well thanks, for the, thanks for the invite, guys, because I would have gone. Well, I know I Teddy's did, very yeah. pissed. I'm very angry invited. with you. And that oh. kind of sucks because Teddy would be a lot of fun. You could have built it as like a back office radio thing. Well, this was before I back office. I don't even office. want any money, man. I would have just gone up to hang out. Well, come on up. No, 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 no. Forget <laughs> it. You got Steve now, so you don't well, need me. Well, you would be a part of You don't Steve, need me. Steve stopped, stopped drinking. It's so much fun. I know. No, so I'm worried that might be an issue. I, I, Yeah. I mean, again... You know, to preface it, I love Steve. I love hanging out with Steve. He's one of my best friends in the world. But if you're talking about going out for a party and you got a guy that no longer drinks, you know, Teddy, uh, uh, drinks yeah, enough for I, four I, people. Believe me, yeah. I don't no longer drink. <laughs> Teddy doesn't have that problem. Yeah, yeah Teddy has no so, problem. Uh, Canada, your loss. Uh, yes. <laughs> So, uh, but, but it's a lot of fun. Last time they picked us up at the airport, we drove. They took us out right away to what they called the best cheeseburger in Canada. And it was an A plus cheeseburger. Thank you for that. We had poutine, which was the cheese fries and gravy and mozzarella, very similar to disco fries in New Jersey. <laughs> that um, was the best. We come back from, uh, from Canada. And, you know, it was a lot of fun, actually. Those guys were really good guys. And there's all these hot chicks running around at the oh, club yeah. and all that. The Sal only- and I, Sal, for a Sal and I are like talking. We're, we're bullshitting about the girls. And Jason comes into the, 
Officers, thought, how about that poutine? <laughs> that's the one thing. That's a, of course, right to the fucking food. food? Is it's that what you say, poutine? Poutine. Yeah, poutine. that's what I call it. With a P. That's right. Yeah, P. That's how you spell it. Poutine. Yeah, yeah poutine. Fucking oh, my Canadians. God. And it, it sounds fancy when you say it, too. It, sounds, it doesn't sound like you're getting cheese fries and gravy. It sounds like you're getting something <laughs> fancy. Well, I hope you both get food poisoned. <laughs> Thank Teddy, you, Teddy. I, I would love for you. We'll talk to them about you for next year. Yeah, oh, great. Next, they listen to the show. Next year. Is there, is there anybody you would pay to hang out with? Hey, what's anyone? What, uh, not I mean, on, on our level, though, that's the other important part. It's not like they're hiring Howard Stern for the weekend. I mean, if I didn't work here and I wasn't friends with them, I'd probably be really curious about what it's like to hang out with JD. I would. I don't know how much I pay, but I think I'd, I'd pay a hundred or two hundred bucks for him to come to the I'd party. I like to put him in like a cage for the weekend and <laughs> pay people they can poke him with a stick. Well, speaking of appearances, of course, the Ronnie Munn block party is a huge feature uh, on the Stern Show and in all of our lives now, thanks to Ronnie and Scott and Shuli. And there is a Harris uh, coming up in January. They're going to be in Harris in Atlantic City doing a poker tournament. And they invited me. They they invited you, Will, right? I think they invited everybody who works here. <laughs> yeah. And and the thing is, is that it's a non except Doug Hurwitz. Yeah. <laughs> it's a non paying gig. So what they're offering us, I guess, is a hotel room to play in their poker tournament. And the only thing that that's making me hesitate to saying yes to that is I feel once you sign on, you're fair game now for the whole weekend. And I don't know, you know, a free hotel room isn't necessarily enough for me to be fair game in Shuley's road show. What do you think? I don't know. I think that, you know, you get the free hotel room, you get to hang out at the hotel, at the casino, you get to play in this poker tournament. I don't think they're looking for much more than that. What are you, are you going to go? Yeah. Yeah, to I'm actually invited to this one, so I plan on going. And I think it's just one night, Jay, so I don't know what? how much stuff you're really going to get roped into. No, no, it's not roped. I'm going to go regardless. I just don't know if I want to go on their dime, is what I'm saying. Uh, like, I want to go to the block party just to watch it. But I, you you're know, not their whore? I don't want to be their whore. Yeah, I don't want to be their whore. Well, Will and I have no problem being whores. But, you know, because I went down to the Philly block party, and they talked about it for a week, and we got nothing except I got ripped on the air for Oh, and those great straight. pictures of you passed out on yeah. the floor. And, yeah, that's what oh, I'm yeah, talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My well, wife was angry at me. So. Yeah, it was, great <laughs> it was a great experience. Yeah, right. But wait, who else, so who's going to this event? Well, here's the deal, and this is why we have uh, the lovely queen of the back office, Tracy Millman, here. Um, so this company, Near Dark... Uh, entertainment near Atlantic City. I guess they're promoting the show down there, and they put out this poster for the have Ronnie you seen Block this, Tracy? Party. I have not seen that yet. And Tracy, we have you down here because uh, while I hand it to you, uh, we find it interesting that Richie uh, Wilson and Rachel Fine Time got top billing. And Tracy, I'm going to hand it well, to you. Just read the yellow for one sec. So there's like six, or seven names on t on the top here, and then a bunch of names at the bottom. Ronnie Mund in the center of the focus, and then there's Florentine. He deserves credit. Richard and Sal, they deserve it. Surely. JD, I have no problem with that, but but J but uh, Richie Wilson and mm -hmm. and Rachel Fine get top billing. That's crazy. And then under that we get Tracy, the intern wrangler Millman. Is that what you call me in here? Because you thought that was going to. We would never call you that. <laughs> Yeah, we, we, we don't that's outrageous. That. that is okay, outrageous. Not for nothing, I just got a free trip to Atlantic City. I love you. Fuck oh, so off. You're <laughs> you call me whatever you don't care. you want. I got a free trip to Atlantic City. I didn't know about this. I haven't seen it. You sold your soul. Tracy, I have a soul, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Compared to a that. lot of people, not only in this room, I'm fine with my soul. Well, um, I haven't seen that. I, I'm sorry to disappoint you. I that know segment I went to I was shit. Go. <laughs> no, we thought you were going to be so angry. We Tracy. wanted Venom. Yeah. Tracy, please, uh, can you at least... Uh, like, <laughs> oh, my God, I'm so pissed off. God oh, damn, surely. So <laughs> convincing. You know, truly. <laughs> well, I appreciate the honesty. Are you looking forward to going down to this, Tracy? Yeah, I've actually never been to Atlantic City before. By the way, so. did you see what? this picture of JD? No. <laughs> yeah, oh, he's I'm like a fat Asian kid. <laughs> It's not a good picture. <laughs> I'm I'm tweeting out the picture on Stern Show right now. It's, it's, so I keep talking while I tweet. Look at him. It's uh yeah. he looks like an Eskimo I or something. Really bad. He looks like an Eskimo. <laughs> and who's you the see guy mouth in the lower and then chest? Mad Dog. Who is that? He's uh, one of Shuli's uh, support comics. He's on the road. He's on the show. Not the quite road. sure how he got top billing either. Yeah. All right, just tweeted out the picture. We're all talking about it I'm at sure Stern here. Show. He wants to at, defend this. At Stern Show to see Tracy the intern wrangler and read about the uh, Harris <laughs> gig on January twenty sixth. Yeah, and not yeah. so young. No, no, no. no. <laughs> we, we talked about this before you came in, and you, my friend, are ultimately responsible for anything that's put out about the block party. So kind of like you were responsible for anything you said on tape while you were drunk and not paid denied, not paid a dime for it. Oh, now to you get want to get paid? Kid. No, well, I'm, what do I pay? My what point do I pay? Being, my Will, point what's being. the going rate to hear a drunken guy talk about banging a chick in the ass backstage? <laughs> On the Howard Stern show for three days straight? It's probably, I don't know. So who what should pay you? Howard? Yeah, exactly. So who should pay you? you Howard should. or me? No, I didn't run not, it three days I, in a row. I don't want to get paid. I'm just saying that was my thanks for coming down there and doing the show was getting my ass kicked on the air for three days. And, and that was my lot, fault. And doing a lot of promotion for your show. And that was my fault. No, I don't think you want credit for it. You should take credit for it. 
I, I, I promoted take your credit show for, for putting a microphone on while you're back there holding okay, court. Yeah, with you everybody. don't think that it, it, if me being at the block party brought anything to the table? Can we hear some of Will at the block party? Al? <laughs> so. Do you have any of Will? Ooh. Oh my! Okay, I've had a good joke tonight. This is fucking awesome. Go to Clean Box Entertainment for more of this. I tell you, we try to book shows every weekend now, and every time all we hear is, is Will going to be at the show? I could be. It's a retarded looking piece of shit. Thank you. Four wins better than the Eagles, asshole. I can't even say anything about that. What am I going to say? I just drove up here tonight with Scott fucking the pace. There he is in the... Oh! I love the booze for Scott. I'd rather listen to Gary talk about fucking Sonos for three hours. <laughs> oh, That's an easy joke. Shit. Always Sonos. I think you're throwing a 20 for that one, Shul. How'd that work out? The fucking video caddy. I haven't seen a move that good since the Eagles drafted Mike fucking Mamula, bitch. That's a very inside Philly inside, Did you get that, inside, inside. Teddy? But no, I'm, no. Not, I'm not here to Mike shit Mamula? on Scott. I'm here Boston to introduce College. my boy. My, the love of my life. The great J.D. Harmeyer. Listen to that pop. 160,000 right, uh, Twitter followers. This, let's bring this down a little. So how, how long did you do on stage? We I don't know, like it. two minutes probably. Oh. No, no, I did a few more jokes than uh, that. Yeah. Surely what I was saying that kind of led into this conversation is I feel once you accept, you know, anything from the block, and this is totally fair, by the way, but sure. once you accept anything from the block party, you're now part of that block party weekend in the way that Will was, you know, became part of that block party weekend. And what he's saying is, I don't think it's so much of a thank you. It's a, I don't know if I want to go through that again. Well, what then I got should, out of it. well, then you yeah. shouldn't get shit faced. The, the block party show. date raped me. The, the block party show <laughs> has sure. nothing to do with Will's actions. The sh- he was. I asked him. It's near where he lives. I said, "Do you want to come by? The fans would love to see you." He said, "Sure, I'll come down." I didn't. I didn't invite him in hopes that he would be a drunken mess backstage. You just got lucky. I got lucky. I got lucky. You're right. <laughs> well, listen, you never know what you're going to get at one of these shows. Go check out cleanboxentertainment.com. And sure, I think I am going to come down for the poker Yeah, what's tournament. your deal? What's wrong Nothing. with your vagina? You don't want to <laughs> what? Yeah, I don't want to whore myself He's out. Going all Who the fuck's on calling you? for you? Just uh, get the fuck out there. Sequoia's calling for me. Yeah. He keeps twittering me or texting me. Somebody's giving your hairy ass a free room. <laughs> hey, you can uh, get in the it. The fact that anyone gives a flying fuck about any of us exactly. is <laughs> impressive. Uh, surely. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, by the way, well, we have a VIP on the line here. By the way, what is uh, Milman going to do at the block party? I'm, hey, surely, what's Milman going like, to do at the block party? The, oh, no, the crowd like that, rickles. Jason? Yeah, she's going to in- wrangle interns. Oh, Tracy can that's do. What it says Tracy can do many things, and uh, Tracy will do whatever she wants. I'm not going to instruct her. <laughs> is she getting or- stage time? I, you know, I was thinking because so many people from the show are going to be here, I would like to at least bring people out on stage at the end, at least say hi to the fans. And and just say hello. So yeah, I, I want to bring all you guys out on stage. Teddy, my we just have to play poker, right? Well, yeah. And, the, and a- does the buy-in on you? No, you uh, guys are bought in. You're, yeah, you're you have oh, seats in sweet. the tournament. I'm in then. Yeah, you're. I'm in. a fit. Sequoia. I'm in. I don't want to text you. I'm in. <laughs> Truly, we were talking earlier about <laughs> how uh, Sequoia's you know, below the Hurwit line. The Hurwit line, exactly. <laughs> Was there a Hurwit line for who you invited to this poker tournament? No, you know what? Hera's where we're holding it. There are huge fans of the show, and they wanted anyone and everyone from the show. Is Doug Herwig have... going? No, Doug <laughs> is not going. You he's remember, a, this alive. is the place that hired Scott the Engineer to DJ. Right, oh, Scott Jesus. and Ronnie. Now that's a party. Yeah, drove him in a limo Hol- out there and everything. What was that guy's name? Hollywood? DJ uh, Hollywood. DJ Hollywood. <laughs> yeah. I believe he's now DJ Skid Row. We have to work it with Scott. Derek, oh, is that who you're pointing out? No, no, no. Oh, hold on I'm a pointing second. to Derek, our VIP. Hold on one oh, second. Hi, I'm going to put you on hold. I think and I'm, I'm about going... to have my legs broken. Yeah. Are... <laughs> Someone's getting choked out. I'm oh, going no. on the radio. For the first time on Back Office Radio, welcome Richie Wilson. Richie Wilson from Howard TV. Welcome to the show. Uh, hello, all. Love hello. the show. What's hello. up, buddy? Hello. Keep the show going. Thank you. Um, I had no idea about the poster. I said to Shuli one day, I was like, yeah, I'll go play poker. And then next thing I knew, I was on a poster. I love it. I had no Richie idea. Like, it, he knows. Yeah, I, of course he I, does. I saw it on Facebook, and I was like, well, what the hell is this all about? I was like, where'd this come from? By the way, Richie, uh, during the show, and I'll do it during the break, uh, but during the show, uh, Rachel, your wife, uh, tweet, tweeted uh, Back Office Radio, a nice bikini shot. I'm going to retweet She everybody. did? Yeah. What? Yeah, I'm going to retweet it out to everybody. Thank you. have a wonderful, wonderful Richie, wife. Richie, I'm sure Rachel. you're tired of hearing it, but, I mean, goddamn your wife. Is She's a beautiful a woman. woman. Man. She puts up with my shit. Yeah, right. Added bonus. 
Yeah, and I get to play with those punching bags. Does it get crazy with you? Because we like we always talk about you on here is like you know when you get in a bedroom it could get ugly. Like you got you know the the, the choker and, and the, the stretcher and all kinds of like medieval <laughs> torture devices. Is she, are, are you guys do any of that kind of stuff? You do that to girls that you don't want to marry. Oh. <laughs> Oh. That's that's the whole catch. You, you know, you do it to them, and you get the hell out of there. Good. That's I'm right. glad to know you're having boring sex like the rest of us. <laughs> hey, I'm married. It's over. <laughs> so, Richard, are you getting paid to go to the block party? Or you just you're just posting um, material. It's it's a it's a weekend in Atlantic City. Oh well, well yes, exactly. You know? Yeah. I mean, I mean, by the way, oh, oh sh everybody else gets up on Richie. Richie, Richie I'm so sorry. It. Now you're by getting the, choked out. Since since when did Atlantic City become a, a destination? I mean, you know, Atlantic City. I mean, it's nice, but I didn't I know, know, have anymore. you not been to the new Harris? I mean, I'm not doing a commercial for him, but it's it wasn't blown away. Amazing. The Atlantic night, City. No, the nightclub at night is, dude. We're gonna have a lot of fun. No, I, I don't doubt it. But, but you not as much fun as you guys in Steve in Canada. I mean, it's fine. <laughs> I mean, Atlantic City is not a destination. Like, we've, Will and I have lived now, you know, in New Jersey, for our New York area for 10, 12 years, and not once has Will ever turned to me and go, hey, man, let's just go off an Atlantic City weekend. It's just, I don't know. Atlantic City doesn't have that kind of pull, that cachet. No, it's a bunch of Asian ladies that take a bus from Philadelphia to play the slots. <laughs> now, talking about appearances, though, a man who is completely out of his mind. It is Derek from Canada who is dropping all sorts of crazy cash on me and Will and Steve Brandano to come up this weekend. Derek. Welcome yeah. to Back Off His Radio. What's going on, boys? What's going on? We're not yeah. on speakerphone, are we, sir? Uh, no, we're not. Okay. Can you, can you hear me okay? Yeah, you're a little echoey, but it's fine. Sorry. Derek, why do you hire us? Let's just get it uh, out there. It's fun to have you guys up. And um, my brother, you guys met Stuart. It's his 30th birthday. so Happy birthday, Stuart. Surprise Stuart. to him. Thankfully, he's out in a loader right now, so he can't hear this. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we're having you guys back up. I feel bad that you guys let on to Sal that you guys are coming and we're not bringing him this <laughs> I know. <laughs> he was pissed, too. <laughs> was he really? Oh, shit. Well, we'll have him next time again. That's all right. It's you can just pay us more. We just, we just wanted to mix it up. You guys were up uh, once. Sal's been up twice, so this will be your second time up. And Brandano's first time. It's uh, What about, de what, excuse me, what about uh, uh, Teddy? Yeah, He's very just, upset. Still never been. Well, get get on the flight, man. The guys there have the flight info. I don't give a shit. We'll get a room. I was really, hoping, <laughs> I was really hoping he'd say, "Who the fuck is Teddy?" <laughs> uh, who the fuck is Teddy? Nobody really knows. But, uh, hey, Derek, who's your wish list? I mean, I know you tried to get JD and you couldn't. You couldn't match whatever price he was well, looking for. We kind of had a half-ass meet and greet with JD when the guys were up to Toronto for the Ronnie Mun block party. We had the party bus out and we provided transportation to the guys all day on Saturday, so we got to hang out with JD a bit. Um, but yeah, we did, we originally wanted JD to come up last time, uh, because he was talking about his, uh, he was kind of jealous about the Kardashians making all this money on appearances. So I said on one of the wrap up shows, Hey, JD, here's some money. Come up here. When you say, wait, wait, and, when you say some money, how much do you mind saying how much you offered him? Uh, it was a grand. Oh, it's just, oh, I thought it was two grand. It was way more than that. It, yeah, it was a grand. Well, still a grand is nothing to sneeze at, by the way. Yeah. 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 What? No, and, and you guys know how we party. Like, all the yeah. too. Like, the flight was included, transportation around, strippers. Uh, we were treated like VIPs. Whatever. And I have to say, these guys own their own party bus. Like, they own one of those buses with, like, a stripper pole in it and a DJ. And, uh, <laughs> I mean, it's just crazy. Yeah, that's where you travel. That's how you. That's how we get. We go from the airport to around town. It, it's a constant party. Hey, do you want me to ambush Stuart here on the air and see uh, if he has something to say to you? No, but I have two quick questions for you. Okay, go ahead. Okay, one, are there going to be girls at this party Friday night? Oh, of course. No, no girls, Jay. Just you, you know what I mean. No, you know what you know what I mean. Just poutine. That's a good question, Jason. Would you prefer a party with only food or only girls? Well, would the girl party not have food? Yes. Yes. Uh, the, the food party. Because I wouldn't oh even... Oh, my God. It's amazing. No, because, listen, if I'm hungry at the party, I'm not going to be able to have a rap with a girl. Breaking news. <laughs> rap with a girl. Oh, I, I've never been to a party without food before. That's you just ridiculous. Want to rap. Look, if you want JD, you just have to invite me because we're tight and uh, we, we travel well together. Jesus, get off your knees already. Sorry. Right. Is it on my chin? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, Derek. Anything special uh, you expect from us this weekend? Uh, you know, Will and I, we're you know, we're 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 mediocre personalities at best. So you know, we don't have like a stick or anything. No, there's no expectations. It was actually funny. I sent the email yesterday, and I said, if you guys have any special requests, and Brandana was the only one that replied. He said, can you just make sure there's some orange juice and regular non-diet pop? Like, oh, is that a rider? Oh, well, sounds like a party. It sounds like a rider. Red Dead and Yams, please. <laughs> <laughs> I can't possibly buy orange juice at the airport. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. Well, that is well, great, thank Derek. You, Derek. We look for, forward to partying with you this weekend. We really do. Uh, Derek's become like a friend. I mean, this, this is in a, this is good times, man. Yeah, well, you guys treat us well, too, when we're down there. So we're looking forward to having you guys up, too. Awesome. And let the poutine flow like water. 
Yeah, we'll make sure there's lots of that. All right, awesome, Derek. Looking forward to it. Talk to you later, guys. Talk to you later, man. Der- Derek's like a friend that has to pay us to hang out. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so bummed I'm missing it. Look, Ma, I've made it in life. No, he's a good guy. <laughs> They're all good guys. They are excellent guys. Stu is a great guy. This is his birthday. Stu falls way below the Doug Hurwitz line. Uh, but we'll get him to be known on the air here. You're listening to Back Office Radio, only on Howard 101. Coming up, Will, it's your least favorite time of the year. It's it's when we talk about whether or not we're going to buy gifts for people oh, in the office. I know you hate that. Give me a break. We have some brand new page 69s that are sure to piss people off. And an underreported Howard 100 news story that when I told Tim about it before the show, his face turned white and his jaw dropped. He couldn't believe it. That is what is coming up next on Howard 101. This is Back Office Radio with Will and Jason on Howard 101. Provided Jason didn't die of a heart attack during the commercial break, this is Back Office Radio with Will and Jason on Howard 101. Are you still alive, Jason? Come on, man. No, I'm actually texting my wife right now, asking her to give me my our doctor's phone number. I'm, oh my I'm feeling worse. You're freaking out. Right. Shaking. I am, and you know, my wife is on Lexapro, and I'm like, I might have to dip into some of your stash because she's like, "Fuck you, no way." Yeah, a, a depressed match made in heaven. That is. <laughs> I wish we just have a bowl of Lexapro. Lexapro out. sandwich. <laughs> Are you gonna have a Lexapro and wine party next time, or just wine? Well, party? every time I drink wine, is a Lexapro and wine party. <laughs> I just, uh, I just ran into one of our interns in the hall, and yeah. she's like, "You guys aren't being mean enough. Ah, you got to step it up that. a little." Love bit. fest. I love. That. Well, here's some so, well, there's a lot holiday of season. Here. You know, we're kind of lovey. I know. I uh, on, on on at Stern show, I tweeted out that uh, poster for the block party that right. has uh, uh, yeah. pictures on JD is just getting killed. Poor it is me. just getting killed. Look, wow, it's a bad uh, photo. From, bad photo from Ryan and Raleigh. Wow, that is a terrible picture of JD and uh, from Mutt who hosts uh, Superfan Roundtable. JD, that is the most horriblest photo of you ever. Sorry, buddy. They did you no favors. The most horriblest? Chris Morris, the great Chris Morris, who does graphic designs for us sometimes, said, damn, seeing JD made me feel like I finally found Waldo. Oh, that's not bad. I don't even, I don't know, even know what that means. Yeah, damn it. I got, ah, got off track. Welcome back I'm to Back Office Radio. I'm trying to think of like a fat Asian. Who, who can he look like? JD. Margaret Cho? That's a good one. Not okay. bad. <laughs> Teddy got one? No. All right, well, fat Asians. If anyone has a good idea, uh, that's an oxymoron. <laughs> Daniela Miller Place, welcome to Back Office Radio. If you'd like to give us a call, it's 888 Stern 101. Hello, Danielle? Danielle? Oh, once? No, no, no. You're just oh, yeah. Oh, sh- sh- hold on, what's she saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, she sounds boring. John in New Jersey, welcome to Back Office Radio. Wow. Johnny. Guys, you just calling us and hey. on the phone? Hey, hey John, yo. Back Office Radio. Hey, sorry, I, I, you said Jersey. I didn't know you were talking to me. Yep. Um, yep. Yeah, I wanted to talk about uh, what Scott DePage said about the show earlier in the week. It, it, his comments about, you know, how people should have, uh, you know, minute allotments based on how important they are to the show. Right. I mean, that, that whole thing is just ridiculous. Part about what makes this sh- show so special, and by the way, I love Back Office Radio. This is great. Thanks, man. Part about what... Part about what makes this so special and has, like, these super fans and stuff is how involved you get in the people. Right. And, like, this, this is this is hilarious. Like, hearing some of the stuff people do behind the scenes and ragging on everybody. I mean, this is great. This is what makes the show what it is, the deep personal stories. I mean, I don't know where the hell he's coming from. I usually never... Well, let me explain them. something to you, John, and thank you for those nice comments and to the rest of the audience. I mean, Scott DePace is not a producer. I mean, he's a very talented director, I guess. I don't know much about directing, but the Howard TV looks really good when I see it. I was going to say, did yeah. you just compliment Scott DePace? He seems to be competent at his job. I don't think Halfway, his job... Halfway, he kind of pulled back. No, no, he's say. good. No, I don't think his job's that hard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's a very good graphic designer. He makes all those graphics that you see, those spinning graphics, you know, for when we play a game like Win Fred's Money or, or something like that. He'll make those graphics and himself. Uh, so he's he he's good, but he's not a producer. He's not an idea man. I mean, he's not he's not a guy that could come in and tell you how to make your show better. Um, so so if, he if, thinks he is. Yeah, yeah really. I know he thinks he's important, but uh, the, the fact is he's not. And if he is, he should produce the show here. Uh, Bain in California, welcome to Back Office Radio. Hey, how you guys doing this morning? What's up? This morning. Uh, I just wanted to talk to you guys. Uh, uh, with all the Ferelli going and guys are swapping around different shows and things like that, I was just wondering uh, what's going to happen, uh, uh, you know, with any I thought you were going to, hey, Bane, no offense, I, your, your comment up here is you want to name me Douche of the Week, and I was curious why. Well, like I said, I've been on Lexapro for a couple of different times. I just can't see myself living 
constantly on Lexapro. That uh-huh. shit's crazy. Well, I, I'll tell yeah. you, it saved my life <laughs> and saved my job here. Uh, honestly, I don't think I, I'd still be working here if I didn't get on Lexapro. So um, I am a big fan of it. All right, I'll go to, I'm trying to get to a negative call about me. Ken, in New Jersey, you think I'm a pussy? Yeah, Jason. What up? Uh, last week when you had your brother on um, during the Douche of the Week segment, you uh, he, he named Howard as his Douche of the Week, and then you just cut him off yeah. before you can yeah. explain why. I'll explain uh, right now. But, Howard's not the Douche of the Week. Well, never is, well, never will be. Okay, I well, do wish you'd let your brother explain that, that one, though. That I, yeah, I mean, was it something that you were complaining about to him that you didn't want? No, to no, out? no, no. And in fact, I because I, I, I did cut him off. I asked him what it was, yeah. and he said it was just he, it was the hurricane stuff. Oh, well. Yeah. Or something like that. Or, or, or he was keeping it going the next week. But, uh, no, listen, on this show, Howard is the man. Uh, we, we are on his channels. We are, yeah. or we are, uh. Don't he, shit where you eat. He's our universe, and we love him. Unless you're JD. <laughs> Unless you're JD. Oh, shit, we're eating. There we I get it. I get it. Lexapro so, slow over here. I know. Mm. I, I admit it. I, I'm getting, and people are scaring are you shit okay? out of me. Are you okay? Well, stop reading it. Stop people reading People scare me on Twitter like you're going to die. Right you can't here. just do that. Right here. Yeah, that's yeah. Okay. So, Will, it's Christmas time. <laughs> it's Lexapro that's going to kill Jason, not his amazing. awful diet. <laughs> <laughs> I like my food. <laughs> Wow, oh. listen to this guy. He's like a kitten over yeah, here now. No. JD, come you, down he's, here. He's weak. Finish him. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody. I went home and made nachos last night. They were so good. Um, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I got that uh, Tostitos queso dip, you know? Mm, no, don't know. I <laughs> can't say I've had it. Not familiar with that one. <laughs> Will, like, Mr. Brown Rice Everything. You think he's had queso? No. <laughs> no. It's like spicy cheese dip, and you put it in the microwave, and you heat it up, and you pour it over these chips, and... Does it hurt like coming out of your ass? Sour cream. Everything hurts coming out of my ass. I don't oh. think I've taken a good shit in like 30 years. Um, so buying gifts in the back office. <laughs> no, it's fine. I don't have to have lunch later. <laughs> <laughs> buying gifts in the back office. Well, you and I are different on this every single year. I, I get really into the holiday season. I want to buy gifts for everybody. I'm running around with cards and, and, and books and, and, and all that. I put tons of thought into it and spend way too much money. And I know it drives you fucking crazy. It does. I don't, I think it's kind of gay to buy. Christmas presents for your coworkers. I hate it. Do you agree? I absolutely agree. Like, I'll buy it for my family, but I know in your case you hate your family, so it's yeah. a little different, right? I mean, you seem to care much more about yeah. giving presents to your coworkers than you do your family. Well, we're not. I can't gift- relate to that. Yeah, we're not a gift giving family. Like on Hanukkah, growing up, like I get a present or two for my parents, but that was it. Like we didn't buy our parents gifts on their birthdays. Oh, or so Christmas for you, it's a novelty then, because yeah, for Will of. and I, it's, we actually have to do it. You it's know, a pain we, in the ass. I have a shitload of presents I have to yeah, do. Yeah, when I buy for the office, that's pretty much. I'm buying for the office. I buy for my wife and like and maybe it. a couple You're friends. Done. And that's it. No. I'm done. Oh, forget it. I've yeah. got nieces, nephews, and you name it. It's that's why awful. I always say Thanksgiving is a way better holiday because you have all the fun of like you meet with your family, you eat a big meal and then without dealing with all the present bullshit. Yeah. yeah, I can buy my own stuff. I don't need a fucking useless scarf. <laughs> <laughs> really? Well, I never bought you a scarf. Well, I, I've gotten you good gifts. Well, if I John Hyde got me like the best of Eagles DVD last year. Oh yeah. And it's like I don't know. I mean, it's a nice thought. I like the Eagles, but am I really going to sit down and watch like highlights of the 1964 fucking Eagles? Ron Jaworski. Oh, Jaws, I like. But, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like. <laughs> Did they just leave? Did he just quit the show? He's very busy. Nah, he had to help uh, Steve out with something in Studio One. Hey, hey, hey! John Hine TV show still on our co-host. Steve sabotaging our show. <laughs> Sabotage. What will we do without Teddy? Well, I'm here to say. Well, I'm here to make an announcement. I'm not buying gifts this year. I have made up my mind. I went I, last year. I made a calendar for everybody. It was a great calendar. So. And a, a back office calendar could be the genesis of the back office show. Uh, uh, everyone's picture from the back office and little comments underneath. And I know you say sometimes you don't like waking up every day and seeing Ronnie's face hanging. Well, that's over the your- problem. <laughs> yeah, I have it in the in the room where I change in the morning, and the first thing I see is like John Hine. Or Scott Salem in the morning. And then, you know, we have somebody come in sometimes to clean the house. And, and like, you you put it, it's it's not Look censored. This guy. Yeah, well, <laughs> listen, it's not censored. So it's like, John Hines' favorite things, blowjobs. <laughs> I forget what, like, the other ones are. They, uh, the couple, Steelers. Oh, and, uh, yeah, for Gary's, it was, like, his favorite thing is teen anal porn. It is. <laughs> yeah, so it's not, like, even a, a calendar you can hang in your house. So I started when I was taking the train right up to Boston last week. I, I was like, all right, I'm going to make a calendar again this year. And about halfway through doing it, I was just, I realized I was bored out of my fucking mind. I was just like, I'm looking at the same pictures of the same people, trying to come up with the same stupid clip. And I'm like, what am I doing? I don't care. I don't care anymore. Not about the people, but about the gifts. So... I'm not buying gifts for anybody. I like that. And uh, and I'm sure now this year you'll start buying gifts for everybody. No, I will look not. like a total asshole. A few people will get gifts. Like, okay, here's the deal. Like, I, Steve. Like, Steve's a guy I would consider buying a gift for as a friend. Are you buying Steve a gift no. this year? Right. Steve hates, by the way, that I hate Christmas. I know. 
He I, thinks that like it, it epitomizes what a piece of shit I am. <laughs> well, I, I, hate I hate that he hates Thanksgiving. So, uh, you know, Thanksgiving is America's holiday, and he hates it. So I don't know. I, you know, everyone's got their favorites. Um, <laughs> you know, do we buy it for Tim? No. Oh, well, oh, good. Gary, maybe, because you know Gary will get something nice. Yeah. And that's the other thing, too. Some people get us, like clockwork, Gary will get us a gift. Robin will get us a gift, usually. Did we get a gift from Robin? No, I don't think she's gotten us a gift. Yeah, Fred's kind of falling out on the gift thing. Howard throws the party that's every fine. year. That's fine. No, it is fine. Any of that. Um, I don't want but, a gift from them. But if Gary turned around and handed me a nice gift and I didn't have something for him, I'd feel bad. Yeah. Well, it's point, it's gotten to the point now with Gary where you expect a gift. Like, you'd be kind of put off if he didn't get you something. Oh happened God. to me, and I've got him nice gifts, and he's never used them. Like, like what? what? Like, I got him a sweet. Mets jacket. It was like eighty bucks, and he never wears it. Well, I mean, I'm not like I hang out with him uh, or ever get invited to his ski weekends or barbecues at his house or anything. <laughs> You're like. not bitter, no, 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 no. not bitter at all. Um, but but no, I mean, like there was a few years there where John Hine and Gary would always get me very generous gifts for working with them on the wrap up show. So I would re- try and return the favor, and I would really put a lot of thought into it. And I, I don't know, I'm just saying, I just felt like they didn't care about them. But uh, not like, I mean, please, they, I mean, one year they gave me, you know, Dexter on DVD. I'd already seen it. So Does Gary know who you are, by the way? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, sure. He spelled my name wrong. You know what's better, John? Uh, anyway. <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> uh, anyway, so, um, anyway, long story short, it's the day they stopped giving me gifts was the greatest year. You know, like, I, whatever it was, 09 or You're whatever. Off everybody hook. stopped giving everyone gifts. And I was like, this is the best holiday season One yet. year, one year, Scott. Uh, the engineer never gets Gary a gift ever. Never gets anybody a gift. And then one year out of nowhere, Scott got Gary a gift, and it totally freaked him out. Why well, do we have John Hine walking you coming in the studio here? in a Boise ah, State there shirt? He is. Uh-huh. John representing Boise State. All right. Uh, I, I heard some of this gift giving <laughs> thing. <laughs> He's all offended I got, by I, Eagles I, DVD. I, I, I fuck yous all around. <laughs> well, I will never get you a gift again. I got Will this sweet Syracuse warm up thing one time. Dude, it was an I, XXL. Do you see me? The thought that counts. I'm like an elf. The, the, the point that you guys are missing that it's I the, weigh 90 pounds. It's the thought that counts. No, it's with not the, the thought that fucking yes, counts. Yeah, just because no. you don't want to get a gift for anybody, that's fine. I don't want a gift from you if you don't want to give one. No, but then I but feel bad. Rain, that, you shouldn't feel bad. No, I feel bad that you go out and spend money and spend time buying a Syracuse. Use warm up jersey that's six times too big for me <laughs> that I can never use. <laughs> that's my trick. Look, I did give it to a friend. Look, you and Fab Mello look awfully f- the same. Okay, so I thought it worked. Now, Teddy, that. were you saying that we didn't give? I didn't give any thought into your gifts. Is that what I heard? <laughs> oh, oh. No, 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 I just said you know, like I, I mean. My, I was more upset with Gary than you. I mean, you, you, it's fine. <laughs> well, you and Gary give a group gift, so that's already like a half cop out. It's like, like John does the ordering, and Gary just says, "Okay, you know, it's it's also for me too." You know, I mean, I, that's got to be the. Those case. guys are so gay; they even get Christmas presents together. No, we discuss Teddy's <laughs> presents together because he produces our show. You know, I'm sure uh, Will and Jason are gonna get you a real nice gift for yes. working on Back Office uh-huh. Radio along with uh-huh. Al. Uh-huh. Although Jason's not getting any gifts, I heard. Is that just laziness? Yeah, no, it's total laziness and not caring anymore. Yeah. Johnny, Johnny, by the way, when you're down here, have you noticed any? Lexapro change and Jason. Oh, yeah, oh. You, I don't know if you've heard that, today, but I'm, he I've been off game. Lexapro for five days now, not on what? purpose, by fucking yeah. fucking up my refill. My fault. St- really? And stay I'm, off it. No, <laughs> it's it's it. great. I mean, I don't I don't think I I do seriously wonder about you and the fact that you're on it and it, it is going to kill you. Eat like I do, but I don't take the Lexapro. I mean, that's so? gonna, and you can't get off a drug like that. Just no, cold you know, turkey. I, like I, that. I, I'm aware of that and it's freaking me out. And I you, you I mean, you can see it. I'm not a, I'm not the, all here today. It's well, like I, the I, old Jason. Yeah, yeah. I kind of like this. This reminds me of the Jason. Like when I was the guest and I came in, yeah. we would sit and talk TV for a while. Non confrontational. Everything was cool. Well, speaking of confrontation, John. Yes. If you'd like to stay here, we're going to move on to the underreported Howard 100 news story of the week. And I think it's about you. Oh, boy. And now, the most overlooked Howard 100 news story of the week. I do host a show every day. So I guess by that measure, I do host the most shows on the channel. However, a lot of people have said, oh, John Hine hosts every show. He's on all the time. I don't think that's the case anymore. I'm thrilled to have my shows. I'm happy to do them every day. But I don't think it's fair if people say I'm on every single channel, every single hour. John Hine can be heard on The Stern Show. He hosts The Wrap-Up Show and John Hine's TV show and co-hosts Geek Time. Yet he argues use others on the channel actually get much more airtime than he does should jason or shuli have reduced roles well that's up to them i mean they both like being on the air 
Uh, they both enjoy being on other shows as well. And that's the other thing that I don't do, John. I don't go on other shows unless I'm asked to go on to them. The more you're on, I think, the less power you pack with your own show. You don't want to be everywhere all the time. And there's more. We've learned Mr. Hine would like an additional hour for his TV show. I would like to have more time on my TV show. We only have an hour, and I think we have enough content for two hours. Howard 100 News. So the underreported news story. Of the I week, walked right into that one. Didn't I? <laughs> Literally, uh, <laughs> is that John Hine feels he doesn't get enough airtime that he like an extra hour on a John Hine TV show, and John Hine just you know uninvited walked into our show. Also said that uh, you know he doesn't like when people walk. He thinks you know, Act- not like thinks actually. That you could actually, over- before this show, Will Murray and I did talk about yes. this oh, specific oh, okay, thing. Okay. So. I'll give myself a pass on that. Um, as for wanting more airtime, I'm very happy with the airtime I have on the channels. That was solely about the TV show and trying to get an extra hour for that. It's got nothing to do with any of the other shows I do or don't do. Well, I'm glad you're here because I'm going to tell the entire audience, and I've told you this before in the past, how you have totally fucked yourself out of getting a second hour of the John Hine TV show. Okay. And you ruined the great opportunity. Last year, Tim tapped you to expand the John Hine TV show by an hour. To do an AGT hour when Howard was on America's Got Talent. Yeah. And I told you at the time that once you get that extra hour, once AGT is over, you're going to own that hour. Right. And But you still passed on it. What I said was I would be happy to make AGT a segment within the TV show because it seems weird me doing a TV show and then coming back the next hour and doing just an AGT show right so i said i would wrap it in and tim said no he wanted a separate agt only and i said no then i'm not is an agt tv right no it is no, i mean it is the only thing on tv well it <laughs> is it is tv essentially well right. right and i would have covered it within the scope of our show but you fucked up i mean you really did because if you had just done it you and know, and 13 weeks later you would have been sitting there with the extra hour. hour and you wouldn't have this conversation nah, i don't know if that's true that's did well, you do some calculations on exactly? I do. okay so john thinks okay. that uh you know it's me and surely and a few other people here have way more hours of airtime now john hine of course is a host of the wrap-up show monday through wednesday One. he is the co uh, the host of john hine tv show Two. on thursday and he is the co-host of geek time on friday that's three when you add in all the replays throughout the week and i went through our schedule John Hine is hosting for a total of 40 hours a week on Howard 100 and Howard 101. Wow. That is four, that is Monday through Friday. I include Saturday and Sunday, but that, that, that's 40 hours a week. It's a lot. I agree. Give I host to back- your next negotiation. Yeah, seriously. Keep yeah. going, Jason. I host one show, Back Office Radio. That's on a weekly basis. Yes, I have a quarterly show and the Fat Guy Show, which, by the way, returns December 17th. I thought the Fat Guy Show was done because you were doing this show. Yeah, but we don't do enough Fat Guy segments in it. And I have to do a whole thing on fat gifts uh, for the holiday season. So the Fat Guy Show is He's returning. bursting with fat facts. <laughs> all right, Jason lost a little bit of the argument there. But all right, let's but, keep going. But on a weekly basis, I am on the air with replays a total of eight hours a week. So you're not including your time on Geek Time? I, I talk, You're not a tune, no. you're including the time? I'm not a host time? of Geek Time. I'm a producer of Geek Time. No, but it's, I didn't say host. I said right. airtime. So you're not including the time that you come in on wrap up. You're not including the time you come in on geek time. You're not including no. the time you go on super fan. You're not including any of that. No. And I'm going to tell you why. Okay. Because you, first of all, I mean, I didn't go, I can't go around and calculate how much time like, like this show where you just, you know, you come right. on, uh, wrap up. A lot of times I go down, I'm, invi- I'm, I'm asked to come down. That's true. Sometimes I do come down on my own. That's true too. Uh, super fan. I, th- I mean, if we're on for an hour, I might talk for two minutes of it. Okay. I, I hardly consider that a, a, an on air experience. And with, uh, geek time, I mean, I think it's about 60% Ralph. Uh, about 30% you and about 8% me and 2% Steve. Does that sound about right? You might want to recalculate those percentages. 80% Ralph, yeah. <laughs> 15% you and Steve and I fight I over I don't there. dispute. This goes to Shuli too. And I, I took a shot at Shuli during that and I apologize for that. That's but, all I wanted. I'm leaving. But <laughs> we're not talking. I, I wasn't talking specifically hosting. I was talking just being on the air and on air presence because in a lot of the news segments, you're a big part of those too, I think, because you're a good sound bite. Yeah, but again, they, great. Yeah. Uh, they, great. you know, I'm not gonna lie. I like being on the air. I, I, you know, who doesn't? I, I enjoy it. But um, Johnny, but, maybe if you cooled it with the airtime, you'd find time to masturbate. You think of that? <laughs> That's a good point. Well, do it, do oh, it literally. That's a, that could be a whole other show. Saturday and Sunday are the only two days you can start week right you, now. If you like. don't host the live show on the channel. I pitched actually a show for Saturdays and Sundays too. Will and I were going to do a sports <laughs> show, but apparently. 
uh, that's not going to happen <laughs> because this news story came out and all of a sudden I'm now limited to the amount of airtime I get. So no. I think it's not I, limited. It's I, just that you have a lot. That's no, I, d- I never said I didn't have a lot. And and we're going back and <laughs> forth. I do want to circle back though to a story you got, if that's okay, to a story you guys did before about this Atlantic City thing. Yeah, I am a part of this Atlantic City thing as well. Oh, and, you are. I didn't yes. know that. Are yes. you on the poster? I'm not on the poster. Mm-hmm. Nor do I mind not being on the poster. I'm going there. John the Stallion High. I'm, go- <laughs> I'm going there to play poker uh, because I enjoy playing poker. As will Murray, my yeah. fe- fellow gambling degenerate, knows. Yes. And uh, I told, and f- when Ronnie was there, I told Shirley, I- I'm not going to the block party. I'm going to the casino. Like I want to play <laughs> blackjack and shoot craps and this and that. And Ronnie got really upset. Like, yes. I-, I was kidding, but man, did he get upset? Did you he, notice that? He takes it very personally uh, when it comes to this show. It's his pride and joy. You Why? Don't, you I don't, don't want to watch him shout at people in the audience. I- I- I will be there in support for the block party for about ten minutes while they're you know changing decks, and then we'll go back and play some more cards. Hey, I mean, surely if we go, when we go to the block party, um, are we expected to do anything other than the poker tournament? I mean, are we expected to be part of the meet and greet? Are we expected to be no, part of? No, you guys, uh, no, oh, you, okay, you guys are not that. obligated to do any of that. You don't even have to come on stage and say hi to people. Is there if, food at the meet and greet? Well, now if you're gonna eat, if you're gonna eat our food, then you're gonna dance. What, you're gonna what, dance, monkey. If I, I, I was saying, I will come to the meet and greet just for food. No, we will make sure there's food. John, okay. how do you think a, a TV discussion would translate at the block party? Uh, isn't that yeah. Richard Christie's bit where I'm going to talk TV for? <laughs> for <laughs> no, that's one of his torture bits. Yeah, torture you, bits. You and Alan Sepinwall could go on stage and talk about season one of The Wire. Speaking of Alan Sepinwall, yeah, you go, thank you, Jason. <laughs> he will be on John Hyde's TV show following this show, along with Steve Randazzi from the League and Dallas Roberts from The Walking Dead. But I'm taking up too much air of your airtime. <laughs> no, you're so, taking too much of the studio, actually. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> by the way, John, you should have seen Tim's face when I told him about. He hadn't heard the news story. What did he say? And I said, he, you know, Tim always wants to know what we're going to talk about. And I said, oh, we're doing this underreported news story, John. Uh, complaints that he doesn't get enough airtime around here, and his face turned white. Oh, great! And his jaw dropped, and I was like, <laughs> "Yeah, I heard." And you did the promo story in the beginning of this one too. That was thanks, Jason. Always in my corner, Jason. Cowell. I think that reaction. I think that reaction had more to do with him being an hour past lunch more than anything else. I'm so hungry. All right, listen. Uh, John, thanks for being a good sport. Thanks for coming down here and, and handling this. And yes, the John Hine TV show is, is next immediately following Back Office Radio. It's a great show. JD will be on it. JD's taking a shot at you on Twitter, by the way, Will. And surely, thank you for crowbarring your way back in here. Yeah, well, yet again. What? He said, uh, uh, JD tweeted out a picture of you saying that you look like a psychopath. He goes, you think I look like a fat Asian? Well, Will looks like a psychopath. I'll retweet that yeah, over at Stern. I do, show. actually. It's a funny picture. <laughs> I'm going to retweet that over at Stern Show. <laughs> all right, when we come back, when we come back, we're going to wrap all this nonsense up. We haven't done page 69 yet, Jason. We didn't do page 69. We, we got time. Our, we got to get our douche of the week winner on the phone. We got to uh, figure out who we're going to give that to and all that good stuff. Only on Howard 101. You're listening to Back Office Radio with Will and Jason on Howard 101. Two guys who would have hated each other in high school. Back Office Radio with Will and Jason on Howard 101. I would have never run with you in high school, Will. Run? You wouldn't you run, run anywhere. With his... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, listen. Welcome back to Back Office Radio. Only on Howard 101. Lexapro. Jesus, oh. I can't talk. Lexapro free. That is right. I have no comebacks. I have no back. He's weak. No I told today. you. Today's the day. Get him. Get him. With, without Lexapro, Jason's like a whackpacker at this point. <laughs> Speed up on me. Speaking of a whackpacker, we have somebody on the phone to accept their Douche of the Week award. Why hit the promo first, please, uh, Al? Douche, Douche of the Week! week. Teddy, uh, at the top of the show, nominated Scott the Pace. Will Murray nominated John Hine. I nominated Eric the Actor. And then halfway through the show, I'm like, wait a second. You the, called an audible. audible. I called an audible. I'm like, the, dude, the single douchiest thing that happened all week was Bob Wolf, Wolfie, who does our interviews, requesting that we write a theme song for him. Anybody that requests a theme song or a, a theme song or a nickname is pretty fucking douchey. So here to accept his <laughs> award, even though he doesn't know it, is Bob <laughs> Wolfie Wolf. Bob, welcome to Back Office Radio. First off, this is a huge honor because uh, I didn't know I was nominated. Oh, this is great. Thank you, you were right. It's so funny. We like in the middle of the break, we call Wolfie real quick. We're like, hey, can we talk to you real quick? <laughs> hey, uh, hey, hey, we just want to shoot on you for the next 10 minutes. We're going to put hold. <laughs> that's, that's the issue, though. Once I'm not giving any information, I know it's something bad. Yeah. So that, that was the cue right there. Jason, what's this about? The silence click. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, Wolfie, did, uh, you know, did, you did ask for a theme song. Right. Explain your jingle request. Request. Okay, first off, I'll be honest. If, if I would say that the request wasn't self-serving in some way, I'd be lying. Of course. Yeah, no yeah. shit. <laughs> it, it was self-serving, and, and I, I, I agree to that. Because 
I, don't know, it, I just thought that it would be kind of a nice little intro when they go into a bit. So first off, yes, I know it, 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 it was it was douchey to request it. But do I feel bad about it? Not not at all. <laughs> well, that's good. When Wolfie comes in the studio, he wants like one of those wrestling intros. So there's like fireworks going off. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, and, and I loved them. I thought that they were they were funny. So yeah, no. but you understand asking for it is pretty douchey. I, I do understand that. Right. I like this, but I I have no regrets about it. Excellent, I'm, Bob. I'm up? thinking about asking if Ronnie can come pick me up after he drops Howard off. You know, like Wolfie got a jingle. Maybe <laughs> Ronnie also... can swing around and pick me up, and I can get a ride in a limo. What's so funny is is that his name is Wolfie. His nickname is Wolf. I mean, I know his last name is Wolf, but his nickname is Wolfie, and he gave himself that nickname as well. You know, like Eric the actor. Well, I guess Eric the actor kind of Eric the midget or or, or Jeff the <laughs> drunk. They don't give themselves their own nickname. We create it for them. Right. right. Now, Jason, I, I I disagree with that. I never gave myself that nickname. Oh, that okay. Howard was the one that changed it from Wolf, which I called in as, to Wolfie. All right. Uh, figured, Howard came up with that, Jim? Well, exactly. But I figure if he goes with it, who am I to argue that? Good point. Just, hey, Wolf, I'm going to put you on hold for one second. Hold on. I, I have to ask Will a question, and then I'll go back to you. Hey, do you think uh, Wolfie was invited to the Christmas party? He was. I was about oh, to he was. Okay. Already asked me about it. I didn't want to embarrass him on you. Hey, we're going to see you at the Christmas party, Wolfie. That's awesome. <laughs> 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 Now, now, am I not supposed to hear what you guys just talked about? Uh, what? Oh, I, I thought putting you on hold was like putting you on mute. No, it's not Al. We're going to shaking his head. All right, well. I'm interested to see what kind of girl Wolfie can get, by the way, his I wife. That Are you married? Yeah. yeah. I did do it. I'm... He's got two kids. Oh, you have two kids. My wife will do that. All right, we'll see if Wolfie has joined the club of guys who hold on, have no, married out is, of their are you? Did you get a hotel room or are you going home that night? Uh, hotel room. Oh, nice. So you're going to be drinking. By the way, oh, yeah. by the way, I am, I am most looking forward to back office radio. We will be on air. Live the day after the Christmas oh, party. Oh, Jesus, really? Yes. Right. Patty, deal with Some it. of us will be hey, here. I'll be here. In, in a hey, pool of your own vomit. I, yes. Can I call you out on something? Oh, go ahead. Okay. I, I noticed something recently. Anytime that you're mentioned on the show during the regular show, even if it's for, I don't know, two minutes or so, every day on the rundown on HowardStern.com, you give yourself your own section. Hmm. I uh, I don't know if that's true, but I do not write the rundown for HowardStern.com, nor do I approve it. Uh, uh, I, I thought. No, I'm taking. Yeah, no, I'm taking it over. And uh, maybe the guys that work on the website, since I'm so heavily involved with the website, are more sensitive to when my name comes up. But currently, right now, I neither write the rundown nor edit or approve the rundown. That's that's done separately by a separate group of people. Okay, but, I just called a couple that I thought, ah, oh, that really didn't seem like it was that big of a Fair enough, fair enough, trying to turn the tables. I appreciate that. Thanks, Wolfie, for being our... Oh, that's okay. Douche of the week. Oh, I'm not Howard. I'm not going to kill you. Don't worry about it. Thank you, Wolfie. Well... That's it. That's it. That's the whole show. I know we spent a lot of time talking about ourselves. I know... I am not on top of my game today, and I apologize. I'm going to call my doctor as soon as we get. I feel like my teeth are going to fall out of my gums. Because you're doctor, forgetting, you're you're forgetting something. Line. What's up? Oh, we, we, we didn't do page 69 oh, yet. Oh, oh, yeah. Hold, hold oh, on one second. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, Jay Harmeyer's here on the show in the house. Well, I just want to make sure my friend Jason is okay. You need anything? Oh, 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 I need some Lexapro, Jamie. <laughs> that, yeah, Jamie. I stopped taking medicated drugs. Do you have any left over? What about unmedicated drugs? Whatever, you know what I mean. You take recreational drugs? medication. I don't take any drugs now. Uh, are you, you should. What about caffeine? That's a drug. Well, Pepsi, yeah. yeah exactly. So, are you upset by that horrible picture of you on the poster for the block party? You should be. I'm not a fan of any pictures of me, to be honest. Uh, Do you have photo approval? When Neither you sign no. I have no approval. So, that's all. That's so all are we going to hang out in AC and have fun? Of course. Dude, are you going to shit on Jason or what? Come on. Yeah, I got nothing. This no. is it. No, he looks he got weak. nothing. But yeah, you could kill him. <laughs> and I'm hungry now. So, so so I'm really I, I have no reason to shit on him. Uh, I have all the reason to shit on you, though, asshole. Just Ooh, uh, joke after joke today. Uh, but I got nothing, really. So <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I ruined this out. Well said as usual. By the way, even me being wounded, I'm still more articulate and uh, quicker than JD. So uh, uh, Jason, ah! Jason, Jason, Jason. <laughs> trying to stir it. Oh, no, no. Are you friends with Jason again? You feeling good about him? Um, I... Uh, I'm, I wouldn't say. Okay, like, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one second or less. How do you feel about me? <laughs> I feel fine. <laughs> okay, great, good, done. I love it. No, no, I want to hear the answer. I think we're acquaintances. We're good acquaintances. acquaintances. And yes, I do love him. I I love everyone here. Everyone? Yes. I love you. I uh, well, unless you bring up a certain name that I don't like. I don't know. Scott the engineer, you love him? Yeah. Scott the pace, you love him? Yeah. John the lighting guy. <laughs> sure. Rob <laughs> Mississippi over here. Uh, yeah, that's Joe. Oh, Mikhashevsky, Joe. I'm sorry, Joe Mississippi. Well, I'm looking at Rob Martin since day one. <laughs> and Rob Martin. 
And uh, you love Ryan the intern? Uh, uh, yeah. Ryan yeah. the intern. Oh, yeah. fuck. You didn't know his name. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know his name. He doesn't talk to male interns. He doesn't. I, I will. I'll hey, real quick. Before, before we talk to any intern. Before we end the show, uh, we have uh, a doctor on to talk about my Lexapro oh, use. Good luck, uh, Dave. Dr. Dave, what's up? Hey, how are you guys? I'm a big fan of your show. Keep it coming. Is Jason going to die? <laughs> I, I caught part of it. And if you don't mind me asking, what exactly are you having an issue with? I'm an internist. I'm also an emergency medicine doctor, and I'm pretty damn familiar with Lexapro. But uh, my, without getting into graphic detail, what exactly are you being affected by? Because I didn't catch that part. It, real quick, I, it was my fault. I waited too long to put in my new prescription. It had run out. I need my doctor to approve it. He needs me to come in and see him before he he will. And I'm, I'm leaving this weekend, so I'm I'm going on like almost a week without Lexapro I'm looking at. How How long were you not taking it? A week, a week, no, a week. I, 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 fourteen years. Um, yeah, oh, a 14, week off. Yeah, what's yeah, gonna yeah. happen? Yeah, yeah. The, the issue with Lexapro is not to get technical. It's what they call a serotonin reuptake inhibitor. Just jump to the end. Oh, for the love of God. Jump to the end. Basically, basically you, you're going through serotonin withdrawal medication, serotonin reuptake medication withdrawal. So you really, when you start the medication, talk to your doctor to confirm this. But you may need to start at a, a slightly lower dose to build yourself back up to it again. So you can get back into the level that you need to be in. That's right. something you should confirm with your doctor. Because the problem is there's a lot of side effects with this stuff. Yeah. And by the way, just as a warning, don't drink heavily on this drug. You will not have a good experience. Uh -oh. Well, I've, I've drank very heavily Sounds on like this drug before. Yeah, so I got Brandano who doesn't drink and Jason who's going to be depressed have out fun of again, the boys. Thank you, Dr. Dave. I drink all the time on uh, the Lexapro. As a plus, fine. your dick's been hard for the first time in five years. <laughs> God, that is true. No, I mean, not that true. There's been, no, but the Lexapro does fuck with your dick. Don't end that way. It does. It. Don't go out. I got this a way. Uh, Viagra prescription. So we're, le we're leaving on Jason's cock. I'm going through entertainment Lip withdrawal. Hard cock. <laughs> Good. Have fun. <laughs> fun in Canada. Well, it's been fuck an interesting you. and weird back office radio, at least for me, because I don't remember half of it. I'm, I'm woozy, but uh, we made it through. Yeah, a couple things I want to promote about next week coming up. Yeah, it's going to be great. George Takei is in the house all week next week. We're going to have a nice, prettiest penis contest just for him also i think i'm really looking forward to this segment ken jennings coming in to play win fred's Ooh. money Ooh. battle the heavyweights should battle be a good the white one. boys uh and uh of course we have the john hine tv show coming up next with alan seppenwall uh and uh tomorrow on geek time at noon we have mark hamill luke skywalker and the great movie reviewer richard roper to jam-packed hard-working nerd fest here on the Howard Stern Show. Thank you all to our back office radio fans. We love you. We love hearing from you. And you'll hear us next week only on Howard 101.